All right, Reggie, James, um, glad to have you guys back this week. Before we get into questions, as usual, I um, wanted to see if either of you had anything you wanted to speak on or a shout out before we got started. Uh, you know, just once again, definitely these t-shirts. Uh, pick up, purchase, don't forget to check those out and check us out on Tubi and of course Facebook, Instagram and all of that, Bob first. But guess what else we got down, y'all? We got a new thing that we, me and James and John gonna try to start up and get going. So we want y'all to go to all, all the different uh, places where you can pick up a podcast. Podcast. We all gonna do a new podcast called Still Bombing. Still Bombing Podcast. And that's what me and James gonna be talking and John the host. And we're gonna just try to see what happens. And uh, hopefully y'all tune in. Right now, we got an episode up. We have two. Matter of fact, one, a new one going to drop today. When the airing of this one, a new full version of uh, with me and James. And we have a, a previous full version up. And so for now, we're just going to drop some full versions. And tell me and James, until we get to our, uh, you know, John tell us that we got enough subs. Or downloads. We did that. And then we're going to start giving y'all, hopefully, that Gangsta Chronicle vibe again. And y'all won't see all that old crazy shit with Reggie be talking. We're going to try to keep it clean, right, and educational. No, we ain't. Yeah, we <laughs> Well, we're going to fight because we don't agree at all with, with the majority of the shit we talk about. But we're going to bring some good shit. So y'all, good content. do us a favor. Go and unsubscribe to that other channel. And subscribe to Still Bombing. Now we already starting off fucked up. Don't, don't, you know, let everybody decide for themselves who's right. So, but we're going to discuss that and, and let's see what's happening. Uh, one thing I can say about that, if you want to subscribe, then y'all know that, you know, didn't know one person uh, create, start that show. You know what I'm saying? And well, we'll get into that. Yeah. Let's let's so, let's, well, let's let John saying, go here. You go cut me off. I know, but I look. He already started this shit. We come with a plan, and you just straight you just straight straight off the cuff, and we just try all to, the time. Yeah, all and, the time. So as y'all see, that's how we do it. So we're gonna let John be the host <laughs> and moderate this, and so we don't get off track. And right. Then, and then uh, and then we get into the subject of the day. John. Okay, um, so obviously after um, our last taping with the information that you guys discussed in regards to Gangster Chronicles podcast, they did their video, um, which was primarily uh, Norman Steele, but um, they basically confirmed that, that in their eyes, James is done with the podcast. Um, yeah. Steele had mentioned that he find, found it ironic because uh, he accused you, Reggie, of conspiring against James with that whole FG situation. And then he accused James of being the person that told him to stop paying you. So it was a lot of pointing fingers or whatever. So I just wanted to get you guys' response and thoughts about what came out of that video and where things stand today as far as James and Gangster Chronicles go. Me first? Okay. Well, as far as when he said that I told him to stop paying Reggie, I did tell him. I, when me and Reggie, Reggie was in jail, and Reggie had said um, something about me on Bomb First relating to uh, Tupac. He he didn't know Tupac or something. You remember that I situation? Remember, I remember a statement like that, but yeah, I, so, I, I got stuck. I got cut off in January. Okay, so those statements me, were made later. No, that was it was on bomb first and I heard it. I, I said it on bomb. And bomb then first. when it happened, I was pissed off. Damn, my nigga coming at me like that. Why is he coming at me calling me a liar? So yes, I got mad. Yes, I said, no, don't pay Reggie. Don't give Reggie no money. I did say that. Ain't no need to sit here and lie. I said that. But Norm did things the way he wanted to do it. So that was that that one time when uh I think we was finna get some some YouTube money, but it wasn't no 
hell of a ass money, mm -hmm. no, no uh, life changing, you know, BS that that was gonna happen. But the answer to that, I did say that. And let me just answer, go into that right quick, just to, to tell y'all timeline, so y'all know timeline. So y'all gotta understand, Gangster Chronicles started about March of 2019, is when we started taping. I taped and James taped over 35 shows prior to me going to prison together. It might have been 33 episodes prior to uh, me going to prison in October uh, of, of 2019. Uh, <coughs> on that time, we had started YouTube and we started making money. My first check from anything from Norm and still happened in October. The, a week or two before I went to jail. December, uh, James or my uh, or Norm brought my wife some money. I did. And, and then in January. And those checks was like $1,300, $1,200. And the second one that my wife got was $400. That's all Reggie got for what? all of that work from doing from March all the way to February or, or January of 2020. That's all I ever got from Norman Steele or Gangster Chronicles. Y'all know the amount of views just from talking about Boosie alone that was generated during that time period. But you know, you had to split it up four, four ways. Myself, Norman, Alex, and James. Me and Alex Alonzo, well, I know Reggie Wright hadn't got anything from Gangster Chronicles and since um, January or maybe February of, of, of 2020. So all of that, that he y'all was taking care of me while I was in prison, it's some bullshit because that money was generated. Anybody know about payments from I don't think nobody YouTube, said he did. That. He oh. said that. Y'all talked about that on the show when y'all tapped at me before or after that. You said y'all tapped at you. Well, y'all was saying, I took care of a nigga while he was in jail. I was sending money to him. His wife or so. I remember that episode of Gates Chronicles. No, I might not. <laughs> I don't remember. You were sitting there, but no one was the one talking. But my point to this is, let me explain y'all the origination. And then I'll let James, you know, finish talking. But how Gates the Chronicles was started off with this, this motherfucker lying. His first words out of his mouth on his response was, I created Gates the Chronicles. Uh, thought of that in my memory room. In 2016. No, motherfucker, I didn't meet you until 2019. And when we started off, the first episode was called what? What? Death, Death Row Chronicles. Chronicles. Death Row Chronicles. Not no Gangster Chronicles. So how you gonna create something and you thought of something, and this is mainly for MCA, so you'll know how your boy just up there lying and how things originated. Why was it called Death Row Chronicles then? James on one of the episodes Made a comment, said, Reggie, I ain't going to sit up here and talk about Death Row all goddamn, <laughs> all goddamn week on the first, in one of the first three uh, episodes that we did on the podcast. And I was like, okay. Me and Norm talk, because me and Norm was the ones talk. James just, James is a straight shooter from the, he just shoots from the cuff. When I supposed to be there? What time I supposed to be there? That's James. That's, that's how James is. And so, me and Norm used to sit up and talk about what we're going to talk about and all of that for the first three or four episodes. Until Alex came. Exactly. And so, for the first three or four episodes, that's how it was done. One day doing the thing, I was like, James getting tired of talking about Death Row. I think we need to call this, change the name. Me and I, he and I sat on the phone, talked to him, we thought about it and all of that. He came with some artwork. Y'all can remember this of a logo of like a gangster car. Yeah. Like a red, it was like a red, like a old mobster style car. On that phone conversation, I'll be lying if I said I came up with the name or Norman came up with the name. But he said, hey, or one of us said, because of that car, that, that low rider car, that old style car, we said Gangster Chronicles. Carl James, we all three agreed on the name Gangster Chronicles. During that time, Alex Alonzo was brought to the table. All of that was done by Norm. 
That's the one thing, the two things, I haven't told you the other thing that Norman did for Gangster Chronicles. And so he brought Alex to the table. We, me and James had heard of him, but we didn't have any relationship with Alex. He came in as a, as a guest. I think even before that, Bosco had came in and did something with us. I don't think Alex was on the us. show. So we were letting people come in as guests and, and do us up. <clears throat> so, after we did that, that little um, situation with, with Alex, we started vibing in there and we liked Alex. And he was a good moderator and all of that. And so about one week or two weeks in, that's when I think me and James it was like, hey, we like this dude. Norm was talking about moving to Atlanta and all of that stuff. And, and I was like, okay, we need somebody. Cause I, I, Y'all know I'm not a good host. Y'all know that ain't what James does. That's what I was like. I was ready to walk away then. You were. And I was and like, no, was going to, to Atlanta. Atlanta. And I was like, no, no, James, he, still, he don't do nothing but do shit from, from Hawaii. He don't even come to the show. I was like, we don't need him like that. As long as he making it happen. James like, all right, Red, whatever. And so then we go and, and create uh, that, that, that tantrum with, with Alex Alonzo. Even then, the only person coming up with concepts and, and show ideals and stuff like that is Alex and Reggie. Alex and Reggie. Norman ain't did nothing but post it up and put it up. Now this is where his value come in. This is where Norman value come in on Gangster Chronicles. He did have agreement, some type of agreement. He ain't paid a dime because the nigga didn't have a dime. The nigga was broke. We'll get into that later. But he, didn't, he was working. He had a job. I mean, okay, he was working. He was a working man. Had a, you know, nine to five. Making it happen, he was doing a little bit of management, a glasses balloon, and busy bone. Okay, enough said on that, right? Um, and so he was doing that little little bit of managing or whatever. But talking about he had thirty thousand dollars to invest in that. No, nigga, you had a deal, and you had a deal with Yuck Mouth, Gonzo, uh, my boy Soren Baker, and all of them. Any of y'all ever heard of their podcast shows? Any of y'all ever heard of that nigga oh, before come on, that? Calm down, Rich. We we not gonna okay. bring all them other people. <clears throat> I ain't bringing them down. I'm just saying that I'll call them the ball of all strikers. Strike. None of those niggas podcast was doing anything. Y'all didn't start hearing about Norman Steele until y'all heard about Gangster Chronicles was put out there. T tell me if y'all have, if y'all even knew who he was prior to that. So for him to go and sit up there and act like he made this and he did all of that, nigga, you made your, you got your little career. You had something with Diamond, Doggy Diamond. Whatever that relationship is, I don't know. Shout out Doggy Diamond. No disrespect to you, bro. Other than that, you don't have anything else going on. And you're going to try to make it. James, Reggie, and Alex made Digital Soap Bob Network and Gangster Chronicles. Still to this day. Only other good run you had with Gangsta Chronicles and Digital Soap Out Network was your boy CJ Mack and Dub C for three or four episodes. And then they figured your ass out. And they, they don't fuck with you no more. They over with, y'all gonna be here, Pacific Cold Media and Reggie Wright and Rick. What? Yeah. But y'all hear about that later. They don't fuck with him no more. Cause, cause they know his his business dealings. Well, I, I, my, you know. One more thing, go ahead. and then I'll let you go. Uh, you know, mess up my train of thought. <laughs> <laughs> but they see. Gonzo told me a long time ago when he was gonna whoop your ass when he had you all scared, calling, telling you was no good motherfucker. Go I, I, you know, nigga tapped at me. Well, we did okay. put it out. Okay, I'm gonna let you say. I mean, like go I ahead. Say, go I, ahead. I just, I just want to keep it clean because right. when, when, when shit like this happened, for number one, we as black men tend to attack. Right. I'm, I'm solely on some different shit, trying not to think like that. And you, and 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 so many. One reason others, I said back and didn't I, do nothing was because you were still over there. Okay, but but that's what I'm saying. So so you and many others have 
told me, kick back. No, 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 no. Especially in this situation. Because you were still eating. Go ahead. In a sense. Yeah, yeah, I mean. In a sense. Yeah. So, you know, I was. I'm not saying that's the only way to eat, that's why. Yeah, no, 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 yeah. no, 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 no. And I get to that. Yeah. Um, anyway, you know, like you were saying, you know, I, I rode with Norm for till the wheels fell off. You, you know what I'm saying? I, I really did that. Even when other people was in my ear, when people was telling me, come do this, come do that. No, I'm not going to shy away and leave him hanging. When, when, when I heard the video, for number one, it pissed me off because you use Mob James, and you know how I feel about that Mob James. And you use Mob James is no longer with us. Yeah. First sign of disrespect. Yeah. Sucked it up, because now I, I relate to Mob James. <laughs> Mob James is James McDonald. James McDonald is Mob James. Yeah. So I'm cool with that. Okay. But you tried to tap at me with it. And then you said, when we first started this, you were spending $30,000. <laughs> but never once did you mention the whole yeah, year. I worked for Gangster Chronicles for free, out of my pocket, gas, wherever we had to be, I was there. Yeah. I was there. I did 35 episodes. So so when, 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 when all of this happened, you know, I didn't, I didn't pay attention at the time. When you went to jail, when you went to jail, that was my first thing. From day one, we all gonna eat. Yeah. Even when Brian came and said he'll work for free. No, split this shit five ways. Yeah. However we do it, everybody gonna get something. I got a text talking about I was money hungry. So I, I formed a relationship with Norm Steele because of you. You introduced me to this group. And, and when Gangster Chronicles, when you left and then Alex left, I was ready to go. But then what did I tell you when we took you to that goddamn prison? Nigga, I'm gonna keep it going until you get back. Correct. So I'm trying my best to get Alex back. Alex, I need you to come back. But I don't wanna tell Alex we got this I, this I heart deal. And that'd be his only reason to coming back. Man, I need you to come back. I can't do this by myself. And I've always said that many times I wanted to leave. Yeah. Because when he said he moved to Atlanta, oh, I don't know what to do. Yeah. I'm new to this shit. So I'm, I'm, I'm still there. You left. When you left, man, what the fuck is going to happen now? But I got to put on my big boy drawers and do my thing. So... You know, at the end of the day, I'm, I'm listening, and I stayed down with Norm. Now, I, I watched this tape, and, the, and they talking about this is business. It was business when I did everything I had to do for Gangster Chronicles. You know what I'm saying? Norman Steele didn't, and, and, and let, me, let me clear this. I don't care who made the name. I don't give a fuck about that. Well, I could you say it's an executive decision but to get me, rid of you. I know, but, okay. but let me finish, because I'm, I'm on some street thinking shit. Okay. When, when, when you, when, when Nino Cappuccino was telling me, nigga, watch your money, you the brand, nigga, you the woo woo. Got y'all, my nigga. But I ain't, I ain't, I ain't on Norm like that. Yeah. I ain't on Norm like I'm on a shit night. Nigga, if this how I gotta figure it out, I'm gonna figure it out. Yeah. But I ain't on him like that, and I kept it 100. When, when, Norman still wanted to borrow money. Got you, my nigga. Here. Yeah. No problem. Yeah. If you need me, I'm near, my nigga. You know what I'm saying? So now he introduced me to a different goddamn world, and I'm good with that. Yeah. You did. Yeah. So here we are, here I am. No phone conversation. You ain't calling me, you ain't telling me shit, you ain't saying nothing. I, I, I meet you on the 11th of last month, get paid off for our second season. Now here come the third season. We supposed to be starting. So I'm sitting at this bench, at this table with him, and I'm like, when our season gonna start? When we start? Oh, bro, we start next week. And he already done take two come episodes. On, let me finish, let me yeah. finish. 
at that point, I think you should have said, as men, I don't think we should be in business no more. Now, you done had a whole year from this FG shit to tell me this is bad for you. I don't give a fuck. I don't care about... If that's the reason. Wait a minute. I don't. I know it ain't the reason. Exactly. I don't care about what, what, what Digital Soapbox is doing. You can sell all the shares you want of Digital Soapbox. My only concern is Gangster Chronicles. I never pried into anything that he was doing on the side. Nothing. If, if, if Norman still got me a, a interview with somebody, here my nigga. Gave him a percent. I gave him money. I saw that. You know what I'm saying? I didn't just put it in my pocket and yeah. walk away from him. You know what I'm saying? Because this my nigga, we can make money together. Yeah. So now this whole time, through this whole year, I ain't made a got. Well, let me say this, so he can go back and reflect. You can't use that, that that shit you said with Reggie and Alex. I paid them more. You ain't paid me shit, my nigga. I ain't got a goddamn dollar from 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 uh, uh, Gangster Chronicles in a year. He ain't paid me nothing next Wait a minute, let me finish. Because the only money that, that was made is when we had to finish these shows off to get my money. But since March of last year, my nigga, you ain't gave me a motherfucking dime. So don't sit here. And this is what pissed me off because you insulted my intelligence. You insulted my, I ain't going to even say gangster, but you insulted me as a man. Telling people you done gave me more than what I was worth. You a mother, you ain't gave me no money. So I, I wish, Norman Steele, that you can, like you talk all that shit, you got papers, documents, show where you gave me money. Show, show me. Be a man and just have a conversation with me, my nigga, because the only reason why I'm on this motherfucker talking, because you won't answer my phone call and talk to me like a man about Gangster Chronicles, about a business that, that I have with you 50-50. A 50-50 contract with you, my nigga. And then you think you don't have to talk to me no more. You don't have to say shit. But you can just turn your back and walk away. I'm on here because I'm out to God destroy. God damn, let me. I'm Black Rage Right. Destroy digital social Junior. network and game. See, this is why I don't like this dude right here be pissing me off sometimes. Junie, I told you before I got on this show that you got to keep me calm. Yeah. You got to keep me straight. I am. Okay, no, you ain't because I'm gonna <laughs> go off your motherfucking energy and get mad because no. I should be the motherfucker really mad right now. I should be too. But no, listen to me. No, listen to me. So, and I know y'all gonna clean this up for me. So, no, we're not. What I'm okay. So, yeah. so what I'm saying to y'all is, I can't be mad right now about the situation. I, I can go after what I think is mine. But I can't be mad, threatened, be pissed off like, wait a minute, like I was the last time. Yeah. But I only got mad the last time because you made it sound like the nigga punking me. I had a problem with that. Okay. But I'm, I'm, I'm good. Okay. So now I got to figure this situation out through paper, not being violent, not being none of this shit. So when, when, when I saw him, him on this motherfucker talking about it's business. If it was business, you talk to a motherfucker that you fuck with about business. Yeah. This whole time, me and him never had a conversation about I ain't fucking with you no more. Because of X, Y, or Z. Yeah. Period. Okay. But to get to your question right quick, John, and then we'll go into a part two of this. Wasn't that, wasn't that his question? No. He, your question. The question that he asked you of, to me and me to you was that I said line James up <coughs> with the FG situation. That ain't the All question right. he asked. That's a goddamn lie. John, did you ask me that question or not? I did quote that Norm had insinuated oh, that, yeah. You, okay. Okay. Yeah, that you had worked against James. Okay. The, the answer to that question is WAC 100. I'll tell it again. I'll show y'all again. Name it, name it. The motherfucker star report. Put it out first. FG and Alex Alonzo conspired and sent it to five different YouTube channels. The paperwork. The only one that picked up and ran with it was the Star Report. 
that dude, DJ AG, who made a living off of it for about six months, got the paperwork, and he's, he's cool with me, but he still exploited my boy, and I didn't like that. He put that shit up on his channel in the comment section. Wack one had to call me and ask me, Reggie, where's that paperwork that they talking about that's out there on your boy? I told you a long time ago that it was paperwork. I said, I don't know, nigga, but the nigga AG got the shit paid up. Get it from there. That's how the paperwork is coming. But you had I, me on bond first, knowing that <coughs> them niggas was going to call See, that's what you believe, because you listen to motherfuckers on YouTube. I didn't know I this. I got my own goddamn mind. What okay, well, then you, if you listen, you don't listen to it. If y'all listen to it, y'all go back and play it. John is the one to put them on the, on the motherfucking phone. I didn't know who the fuck a CO Reek was. I didn't know him. A, whack, I don't be on that. I wasn't at that time on that clubhouse shit. Okay. That nigga cash out us $100. <coughs> I'd have took the call, too. He cashed up on He cashed up on the uh, what, what's not cashed out? Not cashed out. What's the word called? It don't matter. Yeah. Well, he did like a super super, super chat. Call. He did what? Super oh, chat. Yeah. He super chat does a hundred dollars. And I said, John, take that call. If y'all listen to the conversation when John picked up on that phone and Wax started talking, I was like, oh whack. Cause he was blowing me up on my other phone. I was like, I'm gonna call you, dog. Hold up, hold up. And he go, oh no, we on the phone already. So that's lining up. But do any of this matter at this time? That's so Yes, weird, because though. this is the thing is like you said across from the nigga that lined you up. I gotta clear that up. No, let me clear it up. Let me clear it up better for you so <laughs> we ain't gotta go there. Like I tell everybody on Vlad or whoever show I've done, Greg Katie, whoever I interact with, your relationship and my relationship is not with her. This podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I go 40, 50 goddamn years back. Yeah. Not just Reggie, yeah. but his whole family. Yeah. His his grandmama, his granddaddy, and all of their children. Feel me? Now they grandchildren. Go so so we have argued, but we have boom, snap back. Fuck it. Yeah. So let me say this to clear this shit. I don't give a fuck what happened. I don't give a, I don't care how it happened. Was loyalty is the we, thing to me. Okay, well, well we, we sitting across from each no, other. No, I ain't saying about that, but I don't like people But listen to me. Loyal. But see, that's what, that's your problem. You yeah. biting into everybody else's bullshit. Yeah. If, if James ain't biting and James ain't tripping, Reggie shouldn't even worry about it. I'm bigger than I ever been in my life. I'm, 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 I'm not there. Gotcha. You feel me? So what people say, how people say it, I still say the same thing. I wouldn't give a fuck if he did. I know he did. I know he did. I know he had his hand. If I said shit, do I got your phone number? You call me. Have, how many times we talked about the shit? <laughs> okay, we sitting across yeah. from each other. So my relationship don't reflect on nobody else outside of this shit. I don't give a fuck. Yeah. I don't give a fuck. And 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 for them to try to, to make it seem like it's this and that, I'm not finna attack you because it's whoop -de whoop whoop or this cat said that. My loyalty here was before a Norm Steele or anybody else that I ran across in this motherfucker. I got you. It's stronger than that. Right. So that shit don't matter. It don't yeah. matter. I feel, it. wait a minute, let me finish. Okay. I feel, I got a lot, I got a lot of blame for myself because I'm in this situation. I don't blame nobody else for where I'm at today or my situation with this dude because I allow myself to stay on the sidelines and not really pay attention or focus on what was going on. Because for one, we never talked about digital soapbox, none of this shit. Yeah. Because I don't care about digital soapbox, never did. And my only problem with it is, nigga, you a grown motherfucking man. And you can't even holler at me, and I fuck with you. You a grown ass man. Now I'd have been, I'd have walked away. I'd have got up and turned my back if you'd have told me, nigga, fuck you. I ain't fucking with you no more, nigga. You a rat ass nigga. Get the fuck on. Yeah, nigga, please. Have that conversation. Now let's be man about it. Yeah. Now let's see what happened if you talk to me like yeah. that. Yeah. So that's the only thing I'm saying. Yeah. Don't sit here and talk that you my partner, you my brother. I got you. You my brother. I heard you called Lionel Nephew, so I know yeah. that. Yeah. So, so, not to get a phone call, not to get a 
a conversation, but a text telling me that my anger is misplaced. Yeah. My anger is misplaced. Nigga, you won't even talk to me. Now you get mad because I call, I have to call Donnie them and talk to them about business because you won't even give me that. Oh yeah. Yeah, and just to you, Mr. MC8. Um, it ain't got nothing to do with it, bro. No, I'm just gonna say this one thing. Your analogy that you gave as far as no. your not being signed with Epic Record. And, and and all of that is way off base because number one, you ain't never owned your own masters. Number two, you didn't own fifty percent of Epic. My point to being that is this thing. That's why James is upset, and that's why Norm can't make that executive decision just to move anybody out of Gangster Chronicles because James, and maybe you don't know, is fifty fifty owners of Gangster Chronicles and the brand Gangster Chronicles. Just wanted to clarify that so you'll know. That's why James feels the way he does. And you're making the statement about being signed to Epic Records and having to deal with them doesn't hold water because you never own 50% of Epic Records. I would agree with you if you did. But James has not been like Dr. Dre. What did Dr. Dre do, y'all? He left and gave away his 50% shares to Shiv Knight. I don't think James is doing that yet. Bomb first. James, um, we'll I know you've mentioned that, that you haven't really had a, um, a direct conversation with, um, uh, with Norm Steele. Can you tell me, how, how were you notified that you weren't going to be on any of the shows going forward? Well, I was never notified. I seen the video he put up, and Norm had sent me a text. And his text was, you know, uh... It's apparent that uh, Reggie them, uh, you over there with them and this and that, um, with the guy that started this, this ain't got nothing to do with Reggie them. This, whatever that situation was a year ago, if 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 Norm would have got at me a year ago and said he dumb when this shit first came out, cool. You're a grown ass man. You got a right to make your decisions, but. We went all the way through finishing out the second season. And then with his text, he said, so, uh, you know, that it was about money. I, I, all, I wanted, all I wanted is a paycheck. Nigga, I ain't never been about no money. It ain't never been about money. We had 30 motherfuckers that split it halfway. If we got $1,000, all 30 should be paid. That's how I felt. So it was through a text. It wouldn't, you know, he wouldn't hold this conversation. Like I said, I seen a brother on the 11th when we, we got paid off. The 11th of what? The 11th of next month. February. Last month. February. Yeah, February. And once that happened, you know, he's sitting right there. He could have told me, I don't want to do another season with, with you. So I know we 50-50. So what we got to do to resolve exactly. partnership. And then we could have came up with something that's grown men. I'm, 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 I'm not one time have I ever forced this dude to to fuck with my James James McDonald. And and, and just to say it to set this, the dates rec correctly for y'all, because I know most of y'all don't like to do the research. He had already did a show with Daz. He had already did a show with MC8 and himself. Behind my behind my without James. He have been taping shows since March of last year without James. So it's been a plan, y'all. And y'all just don't know what the plan was. Uh, that the money. Let me clear this one up. Okay. Our struggle has been hard with Games of Chronicles. I don't care what people think or whatever. Like I said, I haven't got uh outside of iHeart, I haven't made a dollar in a year. This month makes a year that I received any money from Norm. Except for season Except two. Except only that's the payoff. Yeah, but we get the the upfront and then the other half. Yeah. That's all. Yeah. And and I'm living off that first half of the money. You feel me? I ain't we 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 got to do these shows to get the other half. So I ain't getting nothing in between that. I ain't making a dime off of Gangsta Chronicles. Not in a year. I didn't bitch. I didn't complain about none of that because 
I thought Noah was having a harder time than me. I thought when when his son was going through the uh, NFL thing and all that shit, I'm thinking, okay, I ain't going to stress my no, I have seen that nigga every game with his no. wife and daughter. Okay, wait a minute. Oh, so him going, taking these trips with his family to support her son, exactly. cool. I ain't said a word. I ain't argued with him. Well, nigga, how the fuck you? Me and him never got there. Because I ain't never said nothing. And you don't so, count niggas money. Yeah. Man, so I ain't tripping. So he on this damn show and he said, yeah, I'm sitting there in a, in a million dollar condo in a million dollar. Ah, damn, now you got a million dollar new home, huh? So now they explains why we are where we at because now you done, we done our third season. I don't know what, boom, is here now. Now you saying, if I get rid of James, I can give eight what I want to give eight, and then I can uh, this money. Did y'all give eight any money in the second season? No. <laughs> See, tell you that's the nigga. That's the nigga y'all dealing with. You people that's out there wanting to sign up with digital soap opera and all that, y'all better do y'all paperwork and think and have that money sent to y'all directly. Well, let me let me let me finish. I'm telling y'all, Reggie, cut it again. Fuck that nigga. It it it. It's like he's trying to get me boiled up because... No, no, I'm not speaking Not you. you. I got done, too. I'm talking... I'm, keep, I'm not saying... I got I done by the my yeah. Let's stop cursing. What I'm saying is... <laughs> you cussing telling me to stop. I know. That's it. Let me stop cussing. <laughs> oh, I thought you said this. No. No, what okay. I'm saying is... You got to be a cold motherfucker to get up here and get on here and, and sit across from me and say, oh, yeah, I got a million dollar condo. So you telling me you bought a million dollar condo. Cause you didn't have all this. No, right. so apparently yeah. you getting your money. Yeah. But, you know, I didn't say shit when the people got to telling me, man, no, he, he's signing over a, a digital soapbox. To Jeff. Why is you naming names, man? Yeah, cause that's what I well, do. Well, I'm, I'm gonna shut the fuck up, cause I don't do okay, that. I do. Okay, well, go, go ahead, ahead You go ahead. No, I'm done. All right, so he got a deal with Jeff. He got a deal with Rick. He got a deal with this person and that person. He got deals with everybody selling the soul to everybody. And then, now we're Gangster Chronicles, sending letters out to those people. They talk about, oh, we done paid Norm. We done gave the money to Norm. CJ Mack, Dub C, y'all were right. Any of you future people, y'all better make sure y'all do y'all paperwork right. The brother's not right. Him, and I like Glasses Malone, and all that, but glasses would be out there hustling for him, saying all the right things for him, because they are like brothers, like me and James is. I respect that, got no problem with that. That's all good and cool. But the brothers out there ripping off people, got his hair cut, got his beard, thinking he should night. Should night took care of his people until he stopped fucking with them. Make sure y'all paperwork right, that's all I gotta say. All right, I won't interrupt you no more, James. Go ahead. Okay. Yeah, you don't want to talk. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to talk now. No, I'm just saying. Yeah. And if 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 no one would call and talk to me, I talk to to a big court. Get your brother on the phone, and and maybe you can mediate so my temper, our tempers don't flare up, and he say something out of line. Glasses or whatever. I, we talk to glasses. Glasses. Sam would get him on the phone. Four thirty, five o'clock. No phone call. I I tried to reach out and call him. He don't answer. So I'm just saying, if we we doing business, if it's all about business, don't talk business to me when you can't even make a phone call. Don't talk no monies that you ain't gave me. That shit don't fly here. Don't talk like you've been taking care of me. You ain't gave me shit. And if you have, I wish you get on, on Gangster Chronicles and explain what you gave me, my nigga. What you gave me. So this this wouldn't even be happening if you just make a phone call. Nigga, holler at me. You feel me? But you ain't finna just turn your back and think you finna walk into the sunset with no million dollars. And then I'm sitting here, you know what I'm saying? And I don't believe he made, got a million dollars. I don't believe that. But my point is, my point is, y'all just don't understand what subscriberships and downloads, subscriberships on YouTube, which he's up to like a couple hundred thousand because, but that's digital soap opera. He was smart to put it under that name. But the Gangster Chronicle uh, downloads, 
That's a value. And how Digital Soapbox Network got that? It wasn't from Doggy Diamond's channel. It wasn't from Yuck Mouth channel. It wasn't from I Am Court channel. It was all from Gangster Chronicles. And y'all know that? Anybody that, that's what? being real with it knows that's where it came from. And he was able to get that deal because of the legwork that Reggie, James, and Alex did. All he did was the two things that I, I described in the earlier episode. Well, I'm gonna say that. CBS Studios, which he had a deal, and, and Gangster Chronicles paid for all the other ones that failed, and for bringing Alex Alonzo to the table and making the call to me to, to talk about doing a podcast. So don't think you're I no think, genius. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Come on, man. He was, he was, as far as putting the podcast together, yeah. For me and you were doing Bob first and doing two hour, three hour streams. Yeah, but what I'm saying, before you're that. taking, you, and, and let's just give you 100. Norm did a lot of sitting up and putting those shows together. I said that at the okay. beginning. Okay. I, I, I acknowledge that. Okay. Being foresight on the podcast world? Yeah. Oh, I give him credit for that. Okay. He, he brought that to us, gave us that opportunity. All right. But we were doing things prior to that, and it ain't like I been I ain't benefited a penny yet from 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 Gangster Chronicle podcast. Any money that I got was money that was made off of YouTube. Y'all right. go back and look at those numbers that was generated back there on YouTube. We was making some getting some good views back then, but he wasn't creating that, that producing is creating all of that content, talking about doing those shows. He wasn't even at the studio. He probably was at the studio on three tapings, four tapings of those 35 tapings. Okay, the first three was there. Uh, and then about two more he might have popped in on. If, if he was at more than five of those 35 tapings or had input on any of those shows other than editing them and putting them on the podcast download, and then Brian does all that. Well, he ain't in jail for being drunk driving or something. Come on. That nigga been tapping at me in the comment section. Oh, I don't know. Oh, I yeah. Don't know. I read I don't do Smooth okay. Productions. Okay. So, you know, I know. You want me to mess up some relationships? I'll tell you some of the shit, Norm, telling about you and your drinking, Norm, uh, uh, Brian. So, you just, just need to sit back and be a nice little puppy. Because I tell people, careers, bro. Chris Stokes, you want me to start talking? Yeah, okay. Nigga, you'll change that channel, that name so quick. Keep fucking with me, Brian. Go ahead. I always appreciate you because you rolled up there with James and filmed us no, and took me out. I, I and when Brian came himself. I came, Brian came, said, I just want to film it. Yeah. And he like, I don't want no money. When Brian came, Brian, Brian did his thing. He did so, his thing. Don't just stay in your lane, Brian. I've been leaving you alone, bro. But I know how Chris Oates is playing with that little booty hole. Who is Chris Oates? They know. The boy that like little boys. And what they got to do? That's who he used to work with. Oh, we were talking about that after one. Yeah. Um, okay. Just to clear this up, James. Um, I know you had mentioned that uh, when Norm texted you, he was like, oh, it's obvious that you're over there with Reggie and them at Bomb First. Um, just so people are aware, did you, with the paperwork that you had with Norm, did you have any sort of exclusivity to Gangster Chronicles? No, we just signed a straight up 50-50 contract. Because when I, when, when uh, I heard first one of us, I wasn't going to do it. And then... With other people involved, as far as my, one of my homeboys and, you know, I don't want to say their names or whatever, I told him I'd do it 50-50. Me and him signed the contract and we jumped aboard with them. So that was the only leverage I had that I am 50-50 partners with Norm Steele on Gangster Chronicles, not Digital Soapbox, just Gangster Chronicles itself. So... That, that, that was pretty much it. And, you know, I'm thinking, in the, in the same token, I'm good. But 
you know, me not paying attention, like I said, fully, I, I take responsibility for all that. I can't be mad at, at Reggie, I can't be mad at no FGs, I can't be mad at no Wax, I can't be mad at nobody. But, but, but James McDonald, you know what I'm saying? Like I said, at the end of the day, the nigga resorted back to calling me Mom James instead of saying James McDonald was no longer here. Or my brother, me and my brother decided to go different ways. This man just, I mean, you know that, you know, you know what I'm saying? I'm gonna see if Big Cork can get, just get Norm. You don't need to talk to Norm. Norm ain't got no money no more. You need to be talking to Charlemagne the God. Yeah, you don't need to talk to, uh, to be unfair. It's past Norm now. We need to go, we got some letters that have been sent out to uh, 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 Charlemagne the God and his company. Right. And we're going to handle it professional. We right. ain't, you know, we 50 something years old now. We ain't on that, 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 that shit when niggas used to, how niggas used to bring people oh, knocking on your door. We ain't on that no more. And it would have been bad because I, when, when, when I, when I, when he sent me the text, trust me, I was mad as hell. Uh, Reggie Wright, Lee Ford, uh, Stand. not to name them other yeah. people. Because they probably don't want their name involved, but I was like, fuck this. Come yeah. get Lionel. <laughs> Come get him. I can't do it. You know, but it's like, if you did that, then you're going to sit in jail some motherfucking way for the rest of your life. And then you're going to be worried about who got it and how they're taking care of him. Yeah. Which they're right. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, James McDonald life is totally different. Totally different. And I give thanks to Reggie and Norm for changing that, helping me change that to get to where I'm at today. I don't take no credit from the dude, but I'm saying, if you want to be shysty, you should have been, you, you, you should have been man enough to get at me 100 and tell me fuck me. Or just tell me it's about the money, I don't need you. Woo -woo -woo -woo. Gangster Chronicles wasn't yours, homeboy. I don't give a fuck who came up with the name. The name doesn't matter to me. And you can tell about where y'all heard of Gangster Chronicles from. from. Reggie Wright and James McDonald went on Vlad TV. We had Vlad TV write our stuff on his website. Vlad helped us out on that. And we promoted the heck out of that on, um, on Vlad channel. And he allowed us to do that. And on Bob first when we was doing our streams. That's how y'all heard about Gangster Chronicles, y'all. Y'all want to keep it real. Any of y'all that came, they will honestly say, y'all didn't hear about Gangster Chronicles until y'all saw James and myself on Vlad TV in the comments and us doing those interviews that we were those four hour long live streams we were doing on Bob first. Right. Part of that, y'all had no idea who we were. And so for that man to go and try to take credit for all of that, and we give him some. I gave y'all the two things. No, that's 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 what what bothers me the most is that he's saying that this is his shit. Norm, you didn't create. If just say for instance, if I'd have walked away when you went to jail, and we had paperwork then, where it was, would it go? We it was me, Jay, Norm, and Alec. Yeah, we Alex had the it. only one that refused to sign. Yeah. Me and Jay signed the agreement then. That was a year contract. We had a year contract. I, I don't remember it being no year. I remember just the show, Gangster Chronicles. I wouldn't have signed that yeah. just a year, giving him ownership of that. Well, that was the that was the beginning. No, it wasn't no, a year ago. Y'all redid it after y'all no Vaseline me. But when you tell him to stop sending she money to a wife, no Vaseline and, me. And, and, let's say cut, that. and then let's start the no Vaseline conversation because I can hold <laughs> this conversation with you. I didn't know Vaseline. Y'all no Vaseline me. You admitted it in the episode yesterday. Pull it up. That you that you said I that you told, that you told him. Okay, that's how they. Then I told him what to stop paying me. That's go, no Vaseline. Stop paying Reggie. Reggie did all of this for 35 days. All the money we getting is off YouTube. Ain't Charlemagne the God and none of them had came to y'all yet. Now, John did not say um, earlier that when Reggie spoke on me on my yeah, first that's no Vaseline. Up, no, that's can mad. you stop? No, because you know Vaseline. I would never get on a podcast and speak. Y'all say nothing or call Reggie a goddamn liar, period. So when, when I'm like, damn, this is coming from Reggie? Oh. Reggie said that? I don't know what I said. You know how I act. 
And you know how I'm I take. Not, wait a minute, listen. Saying you and, was wrong. No, but listen. You know how I take shit. Yeah. So when when I'm trying to tell Reggie, like God damn, he come like that. Reggie, the only person I said out of Alton's, uh, let's call it a diary or whatever. Okay. You go on live, mother. You go on what you call him and speak on. My conversation. My conversation. I, know, I was justifying what. Why you didn't know it wasn't right? But we I don't was have justifying to... why you said Tupac was spitting on people. Reggie, you know how many motherfucking things that I could come on fucking camera and justify? Reggie said I ain't never rebutted nothing Reggie said. Well, if I say something Ooh. once, you can say it twice. I say it twice. Even even though you can, I can still sit here and say Tupac spitting on motherfuckers. And where did you get that from? You it got don't from, matter. It okay. don't matter. Well, that's all I was, but I'm I was saying calling you, myself cleaning it up, to be honest. Yeah, you got it. Because you never brought that up to me. I just want you to know why I did that. I ain't never lied to nobody on this motherfucker when okay. I talk. Uh, that's respect. I when I talk, I keep it okay. 100. Right. And then, I don't. I, I just want you to know why okay. I did that. Because that was something deep that I did. But it's still done. Correct. It's still done. And I was mad as a motherfucker that I got to get on. On, on Gangster Chronicles and say, okay, Reggie, if you feel woof, now we like we going at each other. Gotcha. So that was my only reason for saying that. So the, I can't reach him where he at. Because Reggie, <laughs> you know, <laughs> when, when, when Reggie went down to that goddamn place, James McDonald, come on, I got you, my nigga. Let's go. Yeah. And you want to know, my best friend in life, my best friend in life growing up mm -hmm. was this guy named Dwight Stowe Ray. Right. You know, me and him relationship ain't been the same since I allowed you to do that. Because he, he wanted to do it too. To go. Yeah. But I mean, he felt the same way yeah. I feel. Yeah. Yeah. I should have been the one that did yeah. it. Yeah. Nigga, you my nigga, like nigga, nigga. But we all in the same motherfucking neighborhood. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And the only reason why I would just call him, okay, Reggie is here, so Gangs and Chronicle gonna take care of each other. Yeah. So. Give me the honors. Let me get in my shit and, and take it. Yeah. And plus, we had a plan. We thought we was going to do more than we did. I, my nerves was fucking with me, and yeah. I couldn't do it. I didn't, I was so like, that, I that's the only reason yeah. why that I said, and, and I told Norm, you feel that motherfucking way? Don't give him, don't give him nothing. <laughs> and I did, and I, I don't have to lie to nobody. If, if, if you want to slap the shit out of me, go and do it. No, nah, I just want my money, though. <laughs> hey, owe me some money. So, <laughs> now, we could do a whole different show yeah. on that part. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I can honestly tell you how I felt about that. Yeah. Like, okay, Reggie is gone. Now it's going here. But I had a plan. Well, me and Norm had a plan when Reggie got out of jail. Correct. We wanted to pick you up with some money yeah. and say, this is what we've been doing. Yeah. I, I would have felt good yeah. by that. But you went to the halfway house, yeah. and then here go the corona shit. Yeah. So you Correct. was never... Not coming back to the show. Correct. That's on my mama. Oh, two days before we were supposed to go and film. Uh, two days before I got sick, we were scheduling to go and do something. Right. Yeah. So yeah. I remember I pulled off the side of yeah. the goddamn road yeah. before yeah. that happened. Yeah. And we had a conversation. Yeah. So you was never, never yeah. excluded. Yeah. That's and true. and I would have never had that. And it would have still been James McDonald, Reggie Wright, and Alex Alonzo. But Alex Alonzo led his Feelings or hatred toward Norm, yeah. tell him, fuck that nigga, and not do the show. Because if I, Alex keep it 100, I was calling, calling, calling. Man, I need you. Yeah. I need you. All the way up until the point, I ain't finna beg no motherfucker yeah. to, to, to do it. Now he and, you got in it, and you did it. And you yeah, did it but he mad. Because I, if I would have told him that... I was trying to get at us, then he'd probably came. Yeah, yeah. But I didn't want that to be the reason. Yeah. And I knew, and to be honest, if you listen to what I said on Bomb First, I said I'm standing in the way because I've been thinking I'm going to get out earlier than I, I can. I'm standing yeah, in the way of a deal. Shit. Yeah. I'm standing in the way of a deal, and I'm going to walk away like Dr. Dre did and let him have it. I did make that statement. Uh, and that was like in August of. Just to put time on stuff, y'all. And you shouldn't have made that statement. And I made that, that shouldn't statement. have been a statement because yeah. my whole purpose. Well, at that time, y'all changed your numbers. Well, you didn't. You weren't answering my call. But Norma changed you know my I number. I with my phone. I know. You were. You terrible. Okay. I know. 
Well, I'm calling from jail. You know how niggas are when they call from jail. But <laughs> why we here? Why we here? Let me say this right now. Let me say this. Yo, talking bad about me and shit. No, I ain't never talked bad about you. I said y'all had. Y'all had Gene Bill on there. Y'all had uh, Marvin. Okay, I'm gonna let you go. Talking bad about me, and I'm like, wait, but let me call in. I gotta talk. And nobody answered my call. And so I'm like, in there. When Good. Gene did, when I talked to Gene, shout out to Gene Deal, yeah. whether you don't like him or not. No, no, I ain't got no problem with Gene. I okay, shout out to Gene Deal. Like Gene. When me and Gene talked, and when Gene got to a certain part or started getting into his feelings about Reggie, let's cut it off. Hold up. When 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 Duh. me and Marv, the big homie, yeah. said he wanted to speak on, on what you had said, feel free to come do that. Yeah. He came. When he got to a certain point, come on, big homie, this is still my nigga. Yeah, okay. This is still a little homie. But you know, when you get sit back third hand, you don't get it back. Well, see, third hand is yeah. Yeah. call me and talk to me. I send you my, and since you mad, I send you a Christmas letter. You never wrote me one time. They must have intercepted. Bullshit. They had to intercept. Nigga, it was Merry Christmas, my nigga. <laughs> woo, woo, woo. I swear. It's missing you. Nigga, I send you a letter and I never got it. Oh, damn. I got about a thousand cars in there I got from Bomb. Bomb first supporters and family and friends. Right. And I'm gonna go through them and see. Okay. And I, but shout out Please to y'all again, because I appreciate all y'all green eyes, my nigga, big man, y'all know who y'all are. But I did that. Yeah. So never have I attacked. Okay. And, I know that. And and just how you, if somebody attack you, you got a right to attack back. You got a right to, whether you choose to or not. Motherfuckers just gotta accept it for what it is, right? So that's why I don't say much when Reggie go to attack. First thing I say, oh, somebody gonna piss this motherfucker off. But yeah. that's how I be. But you know. So, but if I beg to differ or didn't like something that you said, I call and talk to Reggie. Your friends can do that. Yeah, yeah. I took, that's what I thought me yeah. and Norm was. I thought this dude was yeah. my, my dog. Yeah. That's but, why you hurt. But, but it, it, that's why it fucks me up. Yeah. That, I, that I allow myself to put myself in a, a situation like that again. Then I feel fucked up because I didn't attack that dude and come at him with pressure. How I had to get money out of Suge. Yeah. I could have came at Norm that way. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It was up to Norm to accept it or ball up his fist, dog. And I ain't never made him feel like I was on attack. Yeah. I ain't never made still that. Ever. No, and I'm not, yeah, and I'm yeah, not. Yeah. I think I'm, I'm. I think we sh we should be bigger than that. I think we should be bigger than that. But when I saw the the, the video, now he's confirmed that he's saying fuck me because I see Mob James on. Everybody know I don't fuck Mob James, and I, I'm saying I can sit there and say fuck Mob James. But I had a conversation with you sitting in my living room. Remember when I was telling you? This shit is driving me yeah. crazy. Yeah. Mob James, I gotta be Mob yeah. James because ain't nobody accepting James McDonald. Yeah. Ain't nobody taking James McDonald serious. And, and and I went through the shit. I went through the whole shit about being Mob James. That's I, what I told you. They don't need to pray. Yeah, and right. I did that. Yeah. So, you know, if anybody don't understand the fact that that I become the man I am today and I feel the way I feel today, then that's their problem. I got to live with this dude, you know what I'm saying? And I want to be a certain kind of way. I can't be my James raising a kid. Yeah. You feel me? Because he going to be like my James. I'm not teaching that. And then not only that, I te I'm teaching myself to be humble, to be in a better place. And then every time that I'm where I'm at, here comes some snake shit. Yeah. But at the end of the day, I guarantee you, Norman still got to live with what the fuck and how he trying to get down with me. He got to live with that shit. You know what I'm saying? And every day I find something to do. I'm good. I'm good, my right. nigga. I don't hate you. I don't, I don't, I don't want to do nothing to you. It's going to happen for you on your own. For number one, you lie to too many people. Number two, you done, you done, I ain't going to even go there. Number two, you can't even be 100. And you can't even be 100 with self. So you 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 insult me when you sit here and talk about you ain't never did nothing out of line of nobody. Or you ain't, you done paid a motherfucker what they worth. Nigga, kill yourself. 
kill yourself. So that's going to be your motherfucking punishment. You got to lay in that motherfucking bed. You got to think about it, my nigga. So I ain't got to, I ain't worried about it. My first piece. Reggie, James, did either of you see this um, news article that came out about a week ago about this Georgia football player? He was like, they were saying that he could have ended up being the number one draft or something like that, and then he got into some trouble with the law. Did, did, did either of you see that? I saw it, and I know what you're talking about. And, you know, hey, he's the number one draft pick that might have messed up his life and uh, getting picked up, but it's probably nothing. It's turning out it's just a reckless driving and stuff. So he'll do a little time. Some, some, some of the white uh, scouts or, or, or general managers may uh, try to drive his value down a little bit, but he's going to be all right. But that's not the main reason I wanted to even talk on this subject. Um, or I don't even really want to get into that too much because we don't do too much sports talk over here. How I want to take the conversation with James is, uh, and, and get James' feedback is, the reason why this kid is in in custody and stuff, because he was caught on camera uh, racing down the down the highway, down the highway way with a uh, another vehicle, and the two people in the other vehicle died. In the state of California, I don't know about other states, because you all know we have different laws throughout the state. You can get charged for a uh, vehicle uh, mass slaughter in the state of California for doing that when you're racing people and somebody died either in your car or result of your, uh, your accident, or the person in another car die and hit someone or something like that. It's manslaughter in, in the state of California. I don't know about your particular state. This particular state, they only charging him with uh, reckless driving and um, something else, speeding or something like that. And two people died in the process. In the other car that he was racing. My point to this, and this is why I want to go and, and go back and forth and get James' opinion, is about the reason why, and y'all gonna say I'm hypocritical and all of that, but I'm just trying to educate some of y'all. Sometimes it ain't worth talking to the police, y'all. I know that's kind of crazy coming from me, but the only way this dude is going to is getting this charge is because it's hard for just from cameras that you could say that was the person I was racing, or that I was the one that was driving that vehicle without somebody else putting him in the car or staying there. The reason why they were able to charge him is because he gave statements to the police mm -hmm. lying, saying that he was far further away and all that. I'm just trying to educate them, I'll tell y'all, y'all don't, I, even though I preach complying when they come in contact with you, but complying don't mean talking and trying to bullshit your way out of something. And I just wanted to throw an advisory out because I see how a lot of us mess up our lives and the youngsters and stuff by talking to the police and still having a lawyer or something like that with, with them. Me and Jay's here and we go back and forth and we talk a lot of bullshit. But ultimately what me and him is here for is to kind of help somebody that's been in situations that we have been. James being on the other side of the law, me being on that side of the law. And y'all know eventually... I had some issues on the other side of the law. But I do have life experiences enough being a 55-year-old man to say it ain't always good to uh, talk to the police. The reason why this dude is going to probably or was able to get charged to is because he opened his mouth mm -hmm. by putting himself in the car when if he wouldn't have just said, I don't know, play scooby doo we do they wouldn't have been able to charge him. James, you got any situations or, yeah. or anything to piggyback on? I mean, on it's just like watching the first 48. Yeah. If a man don't say nothing, he's walking out the, out the exactly. motherfucker. Because nine times out of ten, they ain't got much to charge you on. Even in this situation. If he wouldn't have said nothing, then now they got to come up with their own concepts. They got to try to figure out what truly happened. If they don't have that statement from him, they had never figure it out. Yeah. The police and... And, and, and they could know... They just have to speculate. Yeah. But speculation don't win your case. Correct. And going in there, going into court with the police and everybody and every nigga that's on the street know when they go to court speculating, you always get out of jail. Because it don't work in front of the jury. Speculation ain't no good. 
But if he would have just not said nothing, he would have been good. Because now they got to go frame by frame, do all this other shit, and nine times out of ten, I mean, you know, he'd have been better off not saying nothing. One thing we learned, everything that you say is going to be that first oh, arrangement. Yes. Well, yeah. they put themselves there. They said they had a little involvement in it. We got enough to charge you. Correct. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So, man, let them do their job. Don't do the job for them. And the reason why we're doing episodes like this is I just want to show y'all this is what Still Balmy podcast is going to be about. It's not going to be about all the drama and the going back and forth and all of that. It's going to be about things to where me and James can have long conversations, debating right. current uh, situations and try to relate it to situations that we know about, we experience. And uh, number one, I don't give a fuck if I don't help. Nothing but one person. One person. That's all I was trying for. I beg the difference. Okay. Me personally, okay. I mean, one is good. Yeah. My grandfather always said that. Yeah. But my focus and my aim is way farther than that. Yeah. Because it's more than one and year out of my and, and And exactly. I can pretty much tell you a story about any and everything, especially the shit that's going on today. Correct. It was going on last year. It was going on the year before that. It was going on 1979. Correct. So I can relate to the shit. Yeah. And it's like some of the shit that I brought to, you know, the, our previous show. Yeah. You know, I can relate to the majority of all that shit. I don't have a problem with helping. That's my purpose. If I can help fix some of the shit that I damaged, I destroyed, then that's what I'm here for. Okay. And I'm not going to let, nor should I let, a podcast deter me from where my true heart is at. Helping people. Yeah, so I'm not gonna let it stagnate me. You know, if Gangster Chronicles is done, that's just a part of my life that I went through. I don't give a fuck about that. It's a name. It's a name, it don't, it don't matter. So people just gotta understand what we're doing and what I wanna try to do, whether we argue or not, yeah. is, is give two different types of versions yeah. to this podcast we finna do, that where where people ain't got to like motherfucking James McDonald. They ain't got to agree with Reggie Wright, but they understand what the fuck they talking about. Yes. And and that's what that's what make it good. Yes. I'm good. And so, like I said, and like we we trying to explain and, and put out there, that yes, it's not always, and I y'all know I'm big on that compliance stuff, and James hate, hate that word, and most, most, Circumstances. Don't talk about it then. But I'm not one to also tell you to talk to the police. Uh, you don't have to be disrespectful and come off like that, but you ain't got to talk either. Can I ask you a question? Uh -huh. If the police stormed in here right now, said, get on the ground, and I get on the ground, and you do like this, get on the ground, I can't. They gonna come over here, whoop your ass, and throw you on the ground, yeah, right? But you can't. Fight. But you can't. Like, I mean, Reg, putting your arms up and 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 if you hit me on the arm with the stick, it's gonna hurt. I'm gonna move. That's a if you continue to whoop my ass, I'm gonna move. I can't register, comply if I'm getting my ass whooped. Well, they, they, they definitely wrong. They definitely wrong. They come in doing that and being that way. But is that going to stop them by you fighting back? Or are you going to win that fight with, with three or four of them whooping on your ass? I don't think fighting back, being on my back, putting my hands up, trying to block shit, putting my finger oh. in the way. I don't think that's fighting back. And that's complying. You don't Cover never. Yourself. That's complying. You don't never see. You just won my case. You, you just won my case. I'm saying if you blocking right? like that, that's complying. My next step is being a goddamn lawyer. You just won my case. That's complying, Jay. How do you? That's the play. Okay, but, but they're not they're saying it. Here. Stop resisting. Stop resisting. Stop resisting. Well, that's a tactic. You used to be a police officer, right? right. Ain't that a tactic that they taught you? But you stop resisting. Stop resisting. He stop got resisting. a gun. He got a gun. All that. They, exactly. They don't teach you that. He Wait, won my they case. Don't teach he won you my case again. They don't teach you, but they do that. <laughs> I'm not saying I'm, they do that. But my point is, they do that. 
But that, okay. that's not something that they try. Right then and there, when they start saying that, they know they wrong. When they start covering up their gun, I mean that that little camera, they know they wrong. They know they <laughs> on some bullshit. Or they broke, or something, all of okay. a sudden broke them that day. And, and at the end of the day, just like the shit that I do, the way that I think, we all got to pay attention to accountability. Take responsibility for the part that you play in any situation. Any situation you involved in, at some point you there, you know you got some wrongdoing in this shit. Like I said earlier, I take responsibility for everything that I've done yeah. and where I fuck up at. And that's when we start to learn and heal and understand self instead of worrying about the next month, the next man. Because see, one thing these dudes and, and this social media is teaching me, black man don't understand shit but to kill each other. That's all they care about is killing each other. Who's the biggest, who's the baddest? I'm past that. I'm past that. Some of these cats have never lived a life, never be 58. Yeah. And by the way, I'm having an uh, almost 60 party. In, in two April. years, you talking about two years from in now? In April. <laughs> oh, oh, almost, you said almost. Yeah. My, my, my next birthday is April. So April to what, Jay? Do remember? Seventeenth. Seventeenth. So speaking on that, y'all, right quick, go, go ahead. ahead. A April the twenty-first, y'all. Guess what's coming out on FX? Just so y'all don't know, basically, you people out of town and all that, FX is showing y'all Tupac uh, documentary. I don't like it. I don't think it's gonna be good, but it's Tupac, and so April twenty-first on FX. Y'all make sure y'all tune into that. Right. And um, happy birthday, James. Not yet, next month. In April. Yeah. We talked about that, that that weekend. And she ignited on the 19th. That's why those niggas get along so well. Yeah. Those niggas born. And guess, who, <laughs> guess who they born around? Motherfucking Hitler. That's why I call them both Hitler. Man, I ain't born around. I ain't got nothing <laughs> to do with no goddamn Hitler. <laughs> but yeah, you know, I, you know, I hear our people say certain shit about Shug and certain things and this and that coming up. Now you saying this and now you saying that. I ain't never deterred away from how I used to be with yeah. Shug yeah. and how I had to treat Shug. Yeah. I'm not your little homie. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. One thing you ain't gonna do is this, that, and whatever. You know what I'm saying? But he wouldn't know, that nigga's a straight punk. No. Yeah. If, even if he didn't have a choice but to fight, Ronald and Donald wouldn't finna let him get his ass whooped. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? So people, you know, people take what you're saying, run with it, which is fine. Yeah. Everybody gonna come up with their own way of thinking, their own beliefs about whatever is said on this bullshit. The, the only thing I, I disagree with you on that, Jay, or the reason, maybe not disagree, but the reason why I defended and respond to stuff is because I sat back. People didn't know who the hell Reggie Wright Jr. was all of 1990 and all the way up until about 2012, 2013 is when I really got active and showing my face. I used to do interviews, you know, on Bomb First and uh, Thug Life, Army uh, websites and allhiphop.com and stuff like that. But I didn't have pictures or anything like that on me. But the reason why I'm saying all that is because if you don't say nothing or correct something, People believe the last thing that they heard is factual. Right. And, and, and unfortunately, that's the era we live in where the last thing we heard become truthful or factual. That's why you got to understand that certain things are, or you just let it go, leave it alone, and, and don't even trip. Because when you find people that, that run the social media and they're mad, then people going to say what they want to say. So. You create the narrative for most people to get on this shit and, and have something to say. Take for instance, this picture that y'all put up about me, have you looking like this? Like I was a goddamn devil. I'm like, look at this picture they posted. So, you know, it's just people's perception of what people think that is best that's, that we involve ourselves in. But I do, I ain't got a choice. Yeah. So yeah. it's fuck it. Yeah. You know, I don't care about all that other bullshit. You know? Yeah. Being fair is being fair. 
Uh, um, you know I don't know saying? if you've been following this story so, either so. of you guys, but um, Dwayne Wade's son, who is transitioning to a um, female, legally changed their name uh, last week, and they are 15 years old. Any thoughts on that, uh, Reggie, from just because I know from you, both your experience growing up, as far as mine as well, even being younger, we did that, you know, that wasn't something that we uh, dealt with on a regular basis. We didn't, I I personally didn't experience this in school. Um, What are your thoughts on the way um, it's changing, the way people now somewhat um, have a choice or I guess maybe having a choice isn't the right word, but maybe having the, um, confidence to say, I really think I'm this, or I really think I'm that. Right. right. Well, John, you got to look at the way the world is today, the way it's built today, the way television is today. It's easier, more comfortable for people to come out of the closet. I'm not even going to closet. Now I watch the wars and I, I listen to Dwayne Wade and his wife speak on that. Excuse me. And to me, it was, it was, I felt him heartfelt shit. I mean, you know, this is his child. He's going to support his child the way he see fit. That's totally up to them. People don't accept it. A lot of people don't accept it. For one, you got transgenders out there tricking men into believing that they're women and that's majority of the problem because when a man find out that you are a man he's going to react now it ain't just on straight people that that's tripping on a transgender shit if you are who you are then be that and explain that to people when you're dating or whatever because you take away my option of saying yeah or nay but who are we to tell anybody that that they can't be male or female? That's their choice. Whether we like it or not, whether we want to deal with it or not, we stay away from it if that's not where we at with it. But I listen to both of them and I can actually relate as a parent of where he's coming from. Where he's coming from. Not all the other shit I didn't follow and I really don't want to get into that but you know if 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 son wants to be or feel that he needs to be a woman think about it we wouldn't hear about the do- download shit or the DL shit and it was so many motherfuckers on the DL this was that am I right Rich? Yeah. and now when when the shit started to come out our television our cartoons is gay our, our, our movies we watching, you see men together. It wasn't like that back then. Yeah. So our, our society is telling us what? It's okay. That it's okay to be that. Because most of the motherfuckers in Hollywood are gay. And okay, go ahead. On you. Yeah. Um, you know, um, it's a hard, hard for me to speak on that situation because Dwayne Wade, not my top 10 favorite athlete, but definitely top 10 basketball player. So it's hard for me to go against him, but I got to set aside uh, my personal favorite. Like Kobe Bryant. Kobe Bryant is my favorite basketball player. Probably top three athlete. Don't think I would like Kobe Bryant personally. Right. On well, some things that he done and all of that. Don't think I would like him. Not, not, not the rape thing. Because I think that was some BS. But um, shout out 50 Cent. <laughs> of all people. Oh. Yeah. Of all people, I like 50. I, yeah, I, I do. don't know. I like 50. I do. But 50, I was looking at TV this week, this 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 week, and the only TV show that I haven't saw a gay character in was the BF, BML series. I was like, damn, this is the only TV show right now that's on TV that they don't have a gay character. Uh, Tyler Perry, of all people, in the House of Pains, was another one, but then they made one of the boys in there gay. Uh, one of Malik, Malik's friends. But um, I'm saying that to say, out of all the TV shows that I watch, y'all know I watch a lot of TV and on YouTube, a lot of responding to you motherfuckers in the comment section. The only TV show recently that I could think of where they didn't touch on gay characters was the BML. 
the BOF, the, the, the BOF series. And so I was like, damn, why do Hollywood keep making us, uh, you know, look up to the, the gay people and, and, and all of that? And so I have an issue with that. Y'all know I'm a big uh, gay basher, probably one of the biggest ones y'all know. Why? I don't know. Um, but my problem with Dwayne and Gabrielle is number one, the natural mother objects to it, all of this. Now, Dwayne Wade's uh, um, opinion would be because he, she doesn't have a relationship with her kids. Don't know. That's family business. I try to stay out of that, that part. But the young man is only 15 years old. Well, the, young, the transgender is only 15 years old. That's too young to be making the decisions that he's allowing his kid to make, in my opinion. If you think about when you was 14, 15 years old, were you doing the same things or watching the same thing on TV or attracted to the same thing that you are as an adult? Some of us are, but a lot of us aren't or wasn't. And I just think that they're making this decision a little bit too too old, too soon. And um, they even thinking about letting her have the uh, sex change uh, operation, which I think is too soon for a 15, 16 year old to be uh, having that much freedom and choice. Because I know we, we in this era of letting our kids be opinionated and let them talk back and time out and all of that. Well, 15 is too early for me. Um, <clears throat> and um, that would be, and Gabrielle Union, who I love, I love everything about Gabrielle. Other than I think she needs some booze. Um, <laughs> but um, I just think she, uh, I think she's pushing that and, and putting that on the way way. And she could walk away at any time out of these people's life. As we know, sometimes. Is she married to Dwayne? She wait, married, but people don't get divorced. But the mother Why is she still alive. That? Okay. The mother, his, the kid's natural mother is still alive, and she's I, I, to I truly believe that that Dwayne Wade should uh, have that sit down, have that communication, that co parenting feel, what? understanding with the biological mama. Yeah. Gabrielle, I think she is. Sitting in the supporter seat, she is, and she's and, and she feel for this child. Now at fifteen, this some emotional shit. Yeah. This some this not just no. When I woke up and I'm and I'm I'm gay. Now I don't need to, this. This is some. Where did it come from? But guess what her boyfriend is. The the boy's bo the, that little white boy I seen the picture with, and that's a woman. Ain't that so crazy? Wait a minute. It was a it was a woman that turned a boy and then now he turned but, but see, this is what people and, and I'm gonna say this and I don't give a fuck who mad. It only becomes a problem when you put it out there, when you when you expose yourself. Yeah. So Dwayne Wade. Well they're trying to be supportive, but but support from a distance. From a distance. You don't gotta be out here and, and explain to everybody because a lot of parents ain't gonna agree to that. And and most of us don't agree because we don't have to go there. Yeah. We ain't never been put in a situation where we have to either, and most have, deny being a parent to he or she that decide to be something else. You can't be like that in my family. The good book says there's no Adam and Steve. There's no, it, it ain't supposed to be that way. Get out of my life. Go on about your business. God ruled the world behind that. Okay, but I've seen it happen. He flooded us behind that, y'all. Yeah, so uh, you've seen it happen. The Bible even tell you there are going to be many plagues. There are going to be many people flipping over. There are going to be many uh, viruses and everything else. If a nigga don't know we living in the life in, in, the, in the books of Revelation right now, then they all lost. Yeah. But with that, with that situation, man, who is us to tell us? Who is us? Because it's, it's in the mind, Reg. It's all about the mind. And and if that boy feel like he want to be a her and then live his life that way, then so be it. At 15, that's my only problem. At 15. At, at, I'm at, just saying that. Because at 15, we, 
Most of us are traumatized any motherfucking way. So we don't know where he saw it at. We don't know where he getting this shit from. But it is what it is. I'm just saying, you know, to each his own, live your life how you choose to live it. But don't expose it and think the world is going to accept it because it's coming from you, Dwayne Wade. That's some, that's some oh, private they're shit. Like, they just supporting your child. No, I'm just saying. They're, they're, I'm sure you probably don't that. care. You know, and, and oh no, I I seen. Could you imagine being Michael? I mean, Magic Johnson seeing his son walk around like that. Put Why? that picture up, John. Now, what's the difference? Woo! But he's older. I'm just saying. What's the difference? Man, all these because you're a superstar that it don't it don't yeah, supposed to happen right. like that. You're right, because we got it in our family. Yeah, and we just don't probably know it. Yeah, yeah. So it it, it just you know teaches on with it, man. Yeah, that's my opinion on that, John. Right. right. But I think the reason is is because it's getting pushed on us to accept. To answer your question, uh, they're making us accept it by watching it and by, like you said, man, we we may not get any views on this particular episode because YouTube even do certain things to it. Right, and I'm only saying it because, <laughs> just like I said earlier, you know, the shit that what they're doing is is pretty much their business. Yeah, but. You want me to accept it. I don't have to accept it. Yeah. But it's not my business. And it ain't nothing for me to be talking about. You're just saying, about. why we are even talking about it. Yeah. Why is it, why is it making headlines in the news for the week? Because yeah. you have transgender uh, men. You got men out there that's prostitutes. Well, that's a good point. And that's a good point when you brought that up. You see what I'm the saying? The tricking part. And they, they, out, and they out there doing their thing. So I didn't like... The fact that they're just being attacked and it is a hate crime and it's this. Not all situations are like that. I'll tell y'all TV show right now, right now today, oh, shit. that y'all watching and y'all looking at this. P Valley. This P no, not that shit. That, he let you know he gay. I don't watch none of that. Yeah, shit. I watch P Valley though. <laughs> Niggas laugh at me. I like it because I like the, the, the light skinned girl that's in the show. But, um, I can't even think of her name right now because I haven't watched it in a while. But a show right now that is a transgender on air, and and you be looking at, and you probably was like, "Whoa, she look good. She be wearing that dress." Who the hell is that? That's a man. Who? The president's wife in the Oval. Is a big old town transgender. No. Yes. Not the one that say <laughs> Jesus killed this child. That's an over. <laughs> That's a woman. I mean, a man dressed as a woman. Ain't that crazy? Pull it up. Oh, she's one. I can learn a lot. I didn't yeah. know that. I'll tell you that, that. That's the scary part, though. That's the scary part about this. Damn. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out, Bob, first. We're going to end it there. James, you had once mentioned that um, you got into a um, a fight or a brawl at the Roxbury with some of the L.A. Rams. Could you speak more elaborate to, to that story and what happened? Yeah, we was at uh, we was at Roxbury. <clears throat> All the homies up there. Everybody that was working with Suge was up there. We was we was getting our groove on. Everybody. What year was this about? You can put the year. Uh, should be about ninety ninety one. Might be before that eighty nine. Huh? No, no, no. Zeke was there. Oh, George Bunchy was there. I say about uh uh ninety three. That late. 92, one of them. I ain't sure, so don't watch come. <laughs> but, I mean, I ain't good with dates. But we all up there, and we up, we up inside the club, partying and shit. And uh, what year was it when Suge walked away when they didn't, they didn't take Suge on the team? Oh, no, that's 88, 87. No, I wouldn't that new because Buncher and all of them was there. Bunchy didn't come because. But Fernio started before that. And you said Fernio started. But I got out in '98. When I got so, out in '98, it that. was it was it was after that. But Shield didn't graduate from school until '88. No, he was trying to trying out for the Rams. That's like '89. And whatever he went through, okay, somewhere yeah. around there, because Bunchy got out, and 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 George and all them was around. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So, so he was around there early. Yeah, George. When George knew, this is this what I'm saying. I don't know the date of that this incident, but they can tell you. So what happened was, Sugar Sugar was outside in his little pink uh, the fuchsia Mercedes. Okay, 
Five hundred SL. Actually, that was uh, Michael Herio, <laughs> Godfather Entertainment. But go ahead. Well, you know, yeah, he's outside, and, and I guess five, six of the rap dudes was down there. So she'll get an altercation with the cats. What he tell us? Everybody blew the whistle. Everybody comes downstairs. Everybody's out there in the little lot on the side where she'll get with these big ass niggas, right? So we looking like, God damn, you sure picked the right ones to argue with. <laughs> so me and, me and the little homie faces next to each other, we looking at each other like, you get high, I get low. Like we already plotting if, if, if somebody gets swung on, we taking off. Yeah. So this particular time, one of the, the, the brothers, one of the dogs, no, one oh. nigga said something and, and she looked at him and looked at us one of the twins took off. The twin took off. And when the twin took off, man, we had one motherfucker. We were standing on top of the car. And like I said, Zeke up top, and I'm down low hitting him in his ribs. All you hear is, ooh, ooh. But after all of the smoke was clear, the twin was still beating the shit out this now, nigga. The twin, they talking about those shit's cousins, Ronald and Donald Knight. Well, go ahead. I thought we weren't going to say no names. Well, just okay, them, so what I'm saying is Twin just had this, I can't stop in him. And he beat the shit out of the dude in front of a car because he trying to run and he hit the dude the street. Okay. And the car stopped and all you see was his fist like, like going past the light and the police pull up. And catch him beating the shit out of this yeah, Ram no player. went to jail that night. Yeah, he yeah. went, but he got right back out. By the time we got to the witch yeah. him, he was out. Yeah, no. But what I'm saying is, it wasn't no stopping him. It was like, fuck it, nigga. And, and that's when we all felt like we were family and, yeah. and we gonna protect each other. And I swear to God, to you today, the motherfuckers felt everything we gave them. Everything we gave them. And then we had people out there applauding and shit because we had homegirls from the hood that was there. Sugar had everybody up there, but the, the white people and everybody was out and people was by their car was applauding and shit because <laughs> we were little motherfuckers compared to these dudes. Yeah, the Rams, the and football we team. Yeah, it was about six of them motherfuckers. Yeah, that was at the Roxy Club. That's also where uh, Sugar got shot at or shot at at the Roxy Club and one of the promoters, uh, Felipe and uh, his partner, got shot that night. I wanted to tell y'all that, not only should, but Death Row made a lot of enemies everywhere. <laughs> yeah, so know. when motherfuckers ain't around, you still yeah. tend to go to, and that's what I didn't understand about Shug. You should go to places where you done beat the shit out of niggas <laughs> and they go back. And you go back. And it, it, goddamn, it shit happened. But yeah. you put yourself there. But we just brought that out, tell a little story about right. the twins. A lot of people ask about the twins. They're very, very quiet, uh, low-key people, and uh, don't right. really like to speak on them too much because they always been straight and 100 with me. For $9.99, I tell y'all some goddamn Linwood right. stories. But those, <laughs> oh, this fool in football, but those two motherfuckers, they, is. they were some fighters. And, right. And, and that's why I always laugh when y'all say Shug was this or Shug was that. No, Shug, like Jane said earlier, couldn't be that way because those two twins weren't going to let it be that way. No. And uh, shout out to uh, the Knight Brothers. Yep, yep. James, I wanted to um, talk to you a little bit about, <clears throat> so, you know, obviously everybody knows your history as far as, um, you know, the mob James lifestyle of the gang activity. But for those that don't know, can you speak a little bit about what year it was that you started into that lifestyle and uh, what was um, the status of the mob when you started? Was it a newer gang? Was it something that was already established? And what kind of led you to go down that path? Well, when I, we moved in, we moved in our house in, on Killing in 1973. And we were basically just regular kids and, and you know, we, we children. And, you know, I went through a lot of things with my parents and uh, a lot of things happened, which everybody know with me and, me and my father. 
And I remember the first incident I had, I was in the third grade at, at Stephen C. Foster. And this was when I was introduced to what would be later on, the homies. You know, they tried to jump on me. We was new kids in the, on the block and they tried to jump me. I went home, got some knives, came back to school and tried again. So I got to chasing motherfuckers through the neighborhood. So now, now we, everybody know who everybody is. So made a lot of friends at that school, which after that they kicked me out of the school, but we still in the neighborhood. Um, uh, the ass whoopings that I was getting at the time, you know, I used to run away a lot and I found myself, my, my safe haven was on 81st in Hooper, which is my grandfather's house. And my, uh, my cousins, Tracy and Tony off of 98th and Figueroa. So I accumulated a lot of friends on each side and I would bring them home and, and when me, Drew, and Tom Tom hooked up, this was, I tried to come back to Whaley in the seventh or eighth grade, which they wouldn't take me. I went to Drew, ditching me and Ron, me and Runt became friends, were closer. And uh, going back to the hood, actually 1980 was, the real start of uh, Lil Mac. That's who I was before. Oh, okay, I didn't know that. 1980. And that was the first time I was shot in the hood. Okay. I got me, Drew, Killer That's Rob. That's when Oak shot you? Yeah. Me, Drew, and Killer Rob, they came through the hood, got off their bikes, put the kickstand, these were some bold motherfuckers, <laughs> got off their bikes, put the kickstand down and start popping. This was 1980. So, from 1980, that's when I knew I had to elevate my game because at first it was just a half a bat. I cut a bat off and that was my choice of weapons. Uh, so let's say 79, then coming on down 80, I got shot and that's when the gun play started in 1980. Uh, the hood wasn't really it was the big homies, Bojangles and all of them in the mob, uh, Rodney Colbert and all of them. Those were my big homies. They were in the hood. But they were mainly looters or were they- They was, they was in the mob, but all of them was once upon a time, looters, looters park. Gotcha. So whatever transpired in between that and they started saying the mob, that's when, you know, I'm looking up to the big homies because yeah. we hanging out and, you know, Listening to the stories from Bo Jangles and Rodney and and, and all of those guys. No, bartender was looters. Okay, he was looters. Yeah. So once we start hanging and then hanging and then I say Marcus Nunn. It was just so much gangsterism that I seen in China Dog that it was like, man, because we used to hang up under the headquarters. See, a lot of cats don't understand. The Stanley Pitts and and all of those guys, it was this, 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 okay, I gotta step my game up so a motherfucker know me like they know them. Yeah. So with all this shit inside of me, inflicting pain and wanting to inflict pain and then being shot, it just it just made me decide. I either I'd be all the way in or just half-ass like we were, just hanging out, walking around the hood with our burgundy on, you know, with our, our coats and this and that or a P hat or whatever. So, you know, 1980, 1980 changed the game for us because that's when the game banging really started for us, like really active. You know what I'm Would saying? Would you say because cocaine was picking up there? No, well, the cocaine just, the cocaine took it a different turn okay. for us because when the cocaine came to the hood, everybody started picking sides gotcha. on who they want to fuck with. And that kind of like separated us. Okay. And it did separate us because my ride or die at the time was was Master Ron. Okay. And when I got my share of it, I didn't go to like my just my nigga and because me and him used to do everything yeah. and go and say, here, I'm giving you half of what I got. No. Nigga was so happy he was making that that little change and and 
I bought a 68 Chevy. Okay. And riding around, but I don't even remember you in Cadillac, but okay. Yeah, well, I had the white Cadillac after I got out of, out of, out of jail, right yeah. after the, yeah. the riots. So when, when, when the cocaine came, it took us from the homies to everybody being secretive on making their money and doing different shit. So we were still tight, but we wasn't as tight as we were. You know what I'm saying? We were still hanging with each other. Yeah. Uh, we still had 10 niggas in the, in a hole. You know what I'm saying? Selling their shit, doing whatever. But we wasn't that unit we was. Because if you see one mob nigga, you're going to see a lot of us. Yeah. And we all mobbed together. That's why we was the mob. We mobbed together. So it it, it changed. Uh, me being shot, it changed. Let me ask you that. You said uh, MOB. Yeah. It was for Marvin. Not money over blood? It's money over bloods, money over bitches, the yeah. whole nine. Okay. And Marvin. Yeah. Okay. So, well, we was actually on the hunt, MOV, on the hunt. Yeah. Was, gotcha. We with it. Okay. So, that's what it did. It just went from, from, from one level to the next. Okay. And as we got older, it just intensified, especially for me. And I can only speak on me. Yeah. I, I, I've seen... One one day, Michael Rose, rest in peace. Man, little man, nigga, you Mob Jane. That's who gave me the name really? Mob Jane, Michael Rose. So this was like 81, 82. And Mob James just went ballistic at school at, at Dominguez, because I said fuck school. So I would I would go from 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 Centennial, I mean from Dominguez, and we would catch the bus to Centennial. And it was just, I was going to school just for game banging activity. So yeah, it changed because I felt that if you're going to do it, do it. Go in, go hard. All in. So yeah, it changed. It, 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 it just went from different levels. But at first we were just walking the neighborhood. Yeah. It wasn't going to shoot niggas. It wasn't none of that shit when other neighborhoods were making money already. Bro, dude younger than you gave you your name. Me and Michael Rose, same age. Oh, yeah. Michael Rose, 58, would have been today. And Pierre is what? Pierre is 60. Pierre is Dwight's age, so that's 58. No, 59. I told you, Michael's a year younger than me. He'll be 59. Oh, Pierre? Yeah. So Pierre, one year older than Michael. Okay. Oh, yeah. I thought Michael was my Michael was the baby. Michael's the baby. Yeah. yeah. Michael, Pierre, and Rob. Just like just like Alton. Alton would be fifty Alton is fifty seven. Yeah. You know what I'm he saying? He just turned fifty seven. Yeah. Could be a bunch of the same age. Yeah, same he just grade. turned fifty seven February. Oh, 5th. I thought Michael was younger than me. No. So that yeah, that's what it did, man. It it was, you know, and once Mob James was created, it was just on and cracking. It it was whatever. I had to be in the middle of the shit. If something happened in the hood, I felt that this was our duty to go back. Yes, was I bamboozled, hill wing, but all the OGs went through it. All the OGs was going to jail back and forth and coming home on swole. That was my first thought. I need to get to prison so I can be a big nigga like that. And then here go Lee Ford. Lee Ford was a naturally big Pretty motherfucker good. without yeah. ever going to prison. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? So I didn't have to go to prison to get swole. You know what I'm saying? I went to prison for fucking up. Yeah, yeah. So it was... It did, was did Lee ever do any time? Yeah, he went to prison. Yeah. Eventually, at, yeah. at 45. And it was lately, like, yeah. Yeah, oh, late, well, late, like, oh. you know, and, and you know, just looking up to those guys, like I said, one in particular, a uh, uh, China dog. His game and his his what's called was totally different. His swag was totally different. What they call swag today was totally different because none of the homies had the essays that looked up to him. None of us had just that different. I mean, he was like for real. China dog. Most people don't know he spoke Spanish and English. Yeah. So you know, I've always looked up to that. Um, um, Stanley Pitts, you know, no, I'm just saying, you can be mad, but regardless of what, 
the gangster in them yeah. is is the only thing I was attracted yeah. to. I didn't give a fuck if if however they live in their life. I'm just looking at the big homies, Reg. I'm looking at I the big you. homies. Oh here. no, Stanley name was Stanley. Yeah. So no, when you I just know it's treacherous things that Stanley done. And then, and then he ain't the only one that was treacherous. So you can't be just just say him. It was a lot of motherfuckers out there living their life on some real shit. Yeah. That's why you don't never hear me contradicting <laughs> my bullshit because yeah. it was niggas worse than me before my time. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I only contribute to what they did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. Yeah. Mad. <laughs> Blood right. always took the shorty in on every movie. When when colors came out, it it it, it pissed me off because <laughs> it really didn't show what it was, yeah. what what game banging really was. Not from my eyes, yeah. I didn't see that bullshit. Yeah. Now some things when they had niggas in jail on the gates and banging, you see that. Yeah. But that street shit and the shit and the way the police was coming in there. The movie had to water it down so much to where people really don't understand what the fuck is really going on. And yeah, and I'm not the only guy that was out there gang banging that was pissed off about it. You had both sides. Like, this ain't this ain't the real shit. But they had the gloves as the snitch, the ones that got shot. Well uh, the way they depicted shit happens in real life. That and and I don't give a fuck what hood you in. You have Tattle tales, you have motherfucking cowards, you have busters, you have the niggas. Even that, in the society, they make yeah. the bloods get shot up. <laughs> hey, bloods always take the short end. Well, I, I wouldn't say that because, you know, the way they did it and a lot of shit, bloods has always been outnumbered. Correct. Always outnumbered. Correct. And that was one of my things I said that's, that's to our advantage. You know what I'm saying? Because it weaves out all of those cats that want to be bloods, and then they see what's happening. And everybody that listen to Bomb First going to relate to this here. A lot of cats that was bloods had converted over to be Crips because they, they, they knew the bloods was outnumbered. So you wouldn't qualify to be this. Yeah. So it was a good thing that you, you went over the way you thought you could be more comfortable. <laughs> yeah. So... To to have that disadvantage only means you had to prove a little more than what that you had to. And that's what, one of the reasons why. And no disrespect to the Crips, because they got their reputables as well. Oh, yeah, 100. Yeah. Yeah. So you had to put on what I call the uniform. Yeah. My uniform consists of a P hat with IRU on it to say Paru. My my uh, jacket that said of uh, Blood Power Room and CK on the back. You cannot mistake that as a non-gang member. And I had the baddest uniform on. <laughs> what, a blue one? <laughs> God damn it. You was a cop. <laughs> yeah, but, with that badge and that gun and that. But the power was what, y'all? That pen, I keep telling y'all. That's what put my yeah, in the pen. Exactly. So all of that, all of that to yeah. say that, you know, it was a privilege to be. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because uh, a minority in the gang world. Yeah. It was a. It was a man. You had to be what you had to be, and and I wanted to prove that I could have been the worstest one. Yeah. But I was nowhere near one of the worstest one. Maybe in the neighborhood yeah. or in your mind. Yeah. Yeah. And or in here. Yeah. But it was so many guys that that oh, yeah. you hear them on t on on this social media, the the life they live. I sit back and I can relate to it. The only show I relate to is Snowfall. Yeah. I, I sat there and watched one episode and like, now they doing some real they shit did, now. They did it. They this did. some real shit. Yeah. And <clears throat> that was just the world I wanted to be in, man. Yeah. And um, yeah. And that's why I don't get mad when people always say, y'all niggas think y'all OGs and this and this. Y'all, uh, why y'all on YouTube, real gangsters or real, real OGs don't, don't talk on there? Some of the toughest niggas that I know from Compton. Two, one of the, the two, two of the toughest ones that I personally know or knew or know of, uh, that nigga Gangster 
and James. They on YouTube, and those niggas was, y'all can't take nothing away from either one of them. They can. They can take it all. They can try. Well, they can. They can try. But it don't mean that it's actual. I, I know one thing. I can't erase nothing that I've done. Yeah. So nothing. I laugh at that. But I can fix have some of the shit that oh, I've yeah. done. Oh. I can make it. Most right. preachers. A lot of preachers are, are pimps and drug dealers and all that. But do that change what they're doing now if they really live for the Lord and, and, and teaching the word? Do that make them any less of a man? Or... Uh, I really believed in, in, in that gang culture. I really believed that, you know, the more violent you are, the more serious people will take you. I really believed that. Um, and I got a heart. You know what I'm saying? Some motherfuckers got passes, what we used to call a pass. You with your wife, your kids, your mama, or whatever, you got a pass. If you get caught slipping, I'm going to take advantage of that. And the other side and every other hood did the same thing. I did not believe in rat packing. I think that was the most cowardice shit to ever do. I did not believe in snatching purses from a lady. I think that's the most bullshit. There's other yeah. ways to get your money. I didn't do none of that shit. Yeah. I was a gang member. Yeah. I was banging. That's it. What would you tell the people now to say that gang banging was stupid and, and, and y'all was stupid and all the negative stuff that they would have to say? What would you, your advice be? I would, I would tell them when they hear it, to listen to the person that actually telling them how they lived. Because, you know, you yet to be in a situation such as mine, and you don't want to go down that path because the only things that I'm saying to you is that this is what gangbanging led me to do or summed me to. A lot of a lot of these kids don't understand what gangbanging is. You know, we got and back in my days. Little homies losing their lives. Top Dog was one of the first in the hood at 15. White Boy Glenn was the first one I knew. You know, White Boy Glenn got yeah, shot. Yeah, but, but Top Dog was, I'm talking about one of my little yeah, clothes. You dusty. know what I'm saying? So, you know, I, I, I try to tell them, you don't want to live, and this is the only reason why I talk, because you don't want to live the life me and so many others have lived. You don't want to go to prison and do 40 years. Pay attention to these kids in court crying after the judge done sentenced this 18-year-old boy to life. You'll never see street again. So they need to take heed, pay attention when these older cats is telling them where they shouldn't go. So understand that if, if, if I'm speaking, these older guys are trying to guide you to a better way of living life. And that's what all of these guys, over 55, over 50, should be telling these kids, we can get along. But we're not showing them that. We're showing them we can't trust each other with money. We're showing them that you ain't supposed to have no respect or no friends. You should treat everybody fucked up. That's not the way it's supposed to be. Yeah. If, if, if we ain't getting along just by this, we ain't no good. So... I had to tell my nephew, I told Duty, I said, Duty, you in prison. Prison is different from street. Those guys get along because they got to watch each other ass in prison, meaning blacks, bloods, and crips. Oh, yeah. So you can't go in there with that attitude. Yeah. Uncle Jay, Uncle Jay, I'm, I'm, okay. The next time me and my sister talk to him, oh, yeah, I'm good, Uncle Jay. I'm, Okay, somebody then got at him and, and talked to him. So, you know. Especially the federal system. The state system is a little different where the blood and crystal can kind of be a little separate. Mm -hmm. A little, you know, not. But in the federal system, man, they run. The Mexicans run the Mexicans. The border brother, or the Pisces, what they call them, run now. The white boys run their own clique. The blacks. Right. It's, and then they call what they call the... Uh, they, they bunch all the other ones together. They call them not. It's the Islanders, but I forgot what they call them. <laughs> but it's, it's all the Asians and all of them. Right. They under one car. Right. And man, and, and you have a rep. And, and that rep is So what I'm saying, why talking. you can't be that way on, on the, the streets. streets. Yeah. Now, if we just put the guns down and say, fuck it, because back in our days, niggas had to knuckle up before they thought of straight doing great bodily harm to somebody. Yeah. But then... And like in 80, when I said I was shot right here, I could have been gone. 
So I felt like, okay, the, the next time you try to get me, I'm gonna make sure I didn't got this and that and that and that before I'm get out before of here. You got me. So I went ballistic. And 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 my brothers followed suit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't just gonna happen freely. So, you know, but living that life was a total lie. A total lie. And I say what I say for for anybody 16, 14, 13. Even 23, in my 50s, I learned to change. But you ain't got to wait till you're 50 years old to change your life. You can walk away and stop it. Because anybody that want to keep you in that in that situation ain't your friend. Yeah. And we got to understand that, you know, you want to be here to have grandkids, to have a child. You want to be here to, to, to get married and, and all this. Kenny Chubbs and all my, my little homies. Kenny Tubbs died in my arms. Yeah. You feel me? And I watched his little brother around the corner from where he died on the corner die in front of Woonham House. Yeah. So you don't you don't want to see that. You don't want to live that. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, take heed to what, what these cats are saying. You know, never say what I know now. I wish I knew what I know now back then. No. Mm-mm. And we're going to do an episode. I know we talk yeah. about a lot of the negative people that are uh, not negative or, or gang members or something like that that grew up with us. There's a lot of successful people that uh, grew up over there as well. Uh, gang bangers ain't yeah. all bad. No, I said that. That's why I corrected myself. When I said gang that. bangers is just like regular yeah. goddamn people. Just yeah. like the I, police. And, and I try to correct Just myself. like everybody else. Everybody a goddamn gang. I agree. I agree. I agree now. And I thought I corrected myself. We just misunderstood. Now, once we realize that we're not getting a paycheck, once we realize we hurting our own people, once we realize we're taking advantage of a situation and are using our situation, our upbringings as excuses, then we stay stuck. But once we realize that, we can move on. Yeah. This is how, I, this how I, I, I grew up. This is how I said, fuck that. Um, could either you speak about, um, and, and this may be more towards, uh, you, Reggie, but James, by all means, feel free to, to chime in. Um, can you speak about the difference of the Suge Knight that went into, uh, jail or prison in early 97 versus the Suge Knight that came home in 2001? I'll let James start off with yeah. 89 to, uh, to, to. 95, and then I'll take the 95 one. And I can say this clear as day. The Suge Knight that went to school, the Suge Knight that went to college, the Suge Knight that got involved in the in the criminal world and, and finally got a first taste of jail and everything else, it came home totally different than Suge Knight that went to Linwood, that Suge Knight that went to UNLV. I think he changed a little bit before then, but I'll let no, you know. No, no. It was already in him. Okay. He evolved okay. when he went to jail. So when 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 Suge was doing, let's say Fern Hill, okay. Suge was just getting into the business mind of doing what he was doing. He was learning the business, he crafted it. When Suge became death row, I asked Suge, man, Suge, you ain't gotta be out there front. You ain't gotta be up front. But just like a most like most of these guys today that 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 get money that feel the power they change some cats can't deal or or handle power some cats ain't meant to be in that position and that's what happened if she would have managed this shit a little better and just stayed CEO and stayed out of the way of what the homies was doing and taking care of, Suge would have been all right. He'd have stayed focused. I'm telling you, I guarantee you, he'd have stayed focused. Suge used to be sharp as a motherfucker. Suge was a 24-hour clock. If you saw Suge do like this, that was his motherfucking, what they call that? A nap. A nap. A nap. <laughs> and he did it, and he was refreshed when he opened his eyes. Suge, man... 
he was totally different. But going to jail and going to jail and being up front put him in those positions to go to jail. If he'd have just stayed on the sideline, Suge would have been all right. That's the difference between Suge of the beginning to what Suge got now. Yeah. He'd have never been in that situation. What I what I experienced from being around Suge, yeah, I gotta remember I've been around Suge since about 1974, but not as much as I was later. But I've been knowing Suge just as James did, you know, since I was in the second grade, he was in the third grade, and um, we we all went to the same elementary school, the same junior high school, Hall at Hostler Junior High School in Linwood. Mm -hmm. and then, yep, and then Linwood High School. And um, so we did all that school time together. Man, she was always competitive because we were the only ones from Compton. Not the only ones, but a few that was from Compton. That was that was from Linwood. But we always had that respect from each other because we knew we was each from Compton going to the Linwood school. So it was always kind of cool. Um, she was a, a big guy, kind of a ladies' man even then with his big Jerry curls and all of that. <laughs> and I thought I was one too. And so we done dated a few of the same females as well. And uh, I'm actually the one, I was dating a, a young lady and uh, Sharita was her cousin. And uh, they came to a, a, uh, a house party together with my sister. Well, and me and she was hanging out and was there and he was like, Reg, who's that, who's that? <laughs> and my sister introduced her to uh, to Sharita, and him and Sharita had been together up until they, you know, eventually got divorced. And so, uh, Silk and I was was always, like I said, cool. Uh, he went on the football. I went on the uh, Long Beach State and played a little football, and, and then uh, went on to start working in the law enforcement. So our careers path went that way from that time, and now we're talking like 85, 86. Uh, Silk, uh, and I didn't reconnect back until uh, 90, actually 93. I did a couple of little video shoots where I had some guys, did the intro, had the security and all of that for the intro at the liquor store uh, when they went on tour for, that, uh, for the Dre Day, uh, the concert. They did a big old shooting at a liquor store and all of that. I had some problems with the 151s on that video shoot because they wanted to be in the shot. Hmm. I remember I had to act the food with the 151 okay. part rules. But anyway, um, so, but 94, 95 is when I reconnected with Shug and working with him pretty much on a daily basis at that time. Um, Shug at that time was, like James said, was all about business. Wasn't on the front cover of magazines and he wasn't even smoking cigars yet. The cigars came in because he got put on probation. <laughs> And he, he used to smoke a lot of weed, <laughs> even back in the... See, I didn't even know that part. Yeah, 90... Shook was a... Yeah, he was starting to smoke. Non-drug... Non I seen Shook drunk one time. I've never life. seen him drunk. One time. And I seen him. And, and he TV. drunk all the time. You know, nice champagne and stuff like that. Because he was dating girls and all that. And he only got messed up one time. And that was just because me, him, David Kenner, and their dates were... Uh, we were sitting at a table in New York. And was about to go up to our room. And we sat there, and that's the time I told the story on Bond First before, when she knew, he said, that nigga scandalous. Because they were sitting up there seeing who can get who gonna get drunk the first, and they were drinking. And doing that, David Kenner ass was drinking and drinking, and we caught his ass pouring drinks under the table. We, we the chick should have said, nigga, I knew you, I should have known that nigga, he always laughed. I should have known that nigga was scandalous when we caught him doing that right there, Rich. But anyway, shout out David Kenner. Uh, but she was, my point is, was trying to stay focused. Was, right. was focused, is why I tell them those stories. Uh, and so then she, uh, like I said, always a ladies' man. I have only seen she <laughs> in my lifetime not have a female next to him overnight. It was one time, and that was when we got stuck in North Carolina. Riley County, we went to visit uh, Jodeci, and uh, and uh, we couldn't. We went all out about on a weekday looking for bitches, <laughs> and he couldn't find them. And so uh, 
I woke up that night though. Can't see Jojo must have found something for him and sent them over because there was a chick coming out of his room then. Uh, I say all of that just to say she was a ladies' man, was always able to attract females or whatever. Uh, and so I, I, I had nothing but Shug always taught me, Reg, take care of a few females, make them look good, take good care of them. You'll be able to have females and all that all the time because they're they going to line up because they're going to want to be like their friends. And that was his philosophy. Always keep a clean pair of shoes on and a fresh cut. Shit, I bet you tip that nigga. If you had a chick on the side of you and, I try said, to steal it. and I'm saying this, Shug, <laughs> If if you had a bra with you, she'll come in and like, ooh. Oh, he Next day you know, if you walk away and go to the bathroom, that nigga gone with the bitch. He done pull some. I remember one time we was in New York for the murder was the case thing. That was my boy Z. And he got into it. He was like, Red, fuck that nigga should. Because Zeke <clears> was crazy. He said, that nigga just mad because I could pull females just like him. I ain't got to have money to pull. I remember laughing at that. Yeah, that's but, true. Uh, yeah, that shit though. My point to all of this is saying that I'm just trying to explain the, the shit that I knew. Uh, as far as the business stuff, I always say he, was, he wasn't good with reading and contracts and all that stuff. He didn't need to do all that. That was David Kenner's job. And later on, Reggie's job. Uh, the uh, But marketing and promoting something, I think he's second to none. I think the job that Russell Simmons ended up taking when he had that big deal with with Coca-Cola and marketing, when he blew up Tyree singing on the bus and all that, I believe she should have got that job because that's what I believe she was. Uh, okay, so she was this marketing genius, successful, lucky, what, 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 he, what he achieved. Went to prison. We all know those stories. And I no, fuck prison. that. Don't make this sound like a obituary or we in church. Well, yeah, Bearing you know, he said before. He was full of shit too. Say I mean, let me hear. Well, well, no, no, full no. Of Shug had his good qualities and his bad qualities. That, and I, I always say that. I call the ball the ball. Okay. Shug done, Shug done this some scandalous things to people, but I was just telling. And he done, done, but he has done more good things for people than bad things that I observed. From me looking at, looking at, he he had. I, I, that's what I observed on Shug. Not for him. Yeah, 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 I mean, but he, there's some people that justifiably so have have have, have um, faults towards him. I don't believe the people that y'all believe, like Snoop and Tupac and all of them, because I believe he truly loved those guys when he was with them. You know, Dre thing might be scandalous by him fucking on his business partner, uh, female, but then Mr. Lake got to take some blame there. Uh, but yeah, that could be scandalous. So, yeah, those are some negative things that he did. But all in all, he had done good things. Um, went to prison, was still taking care of people. Me, Reggie Wright, told the nigga, shut this shit down, dog. We ain't got to put out another act. We just live off putting out Tupac albums and, and the catalog. And we'd be good, man. We were generating three to four million dollars a quarter just by doing those things. We don't need to be having an office and, and staff and all that, but shit, we're like, no, no, no. You know, we're going we we to keep trying working. to go on. Yeah. Kept people working, we kept them employed. First day the nigga came home. Jay's and Tate, all those niggas was pretty much fired. Buntry was the only one still getting a check, and he got his check cut in half mm -hmm. during that period. But everybody else, checks and everything was cut off. First day he came home, he wasn't just hiring. The homies, you know, for, for to hang around him and all that. He was hiring homegirl Kathy from the neighborhood, females and all of them. He was just giving people jobs, firing all the white <laughs> folks, like they always Well, Suge was one of those cats. If he went to jail and ain't having fun, ain't getting no pussy, yeah, ain't exactly. doing shit, he <laughs> wanted everything to be shut yeah, that, down. Keep it 100. That's when true. he came home, that's true. the party on, y'all. Yeah, that's true. That's, that was the fucked up that part. That was the reason. Then why niggas don't supposed to keep living... Because you gone. When Shug went to jail, man, all them niggas, he need to park them cars. And, he, yeah. he, 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 we got to let people go. Come on. Come on, dog. Yeah. Come I on, didn't man. look at it that way. I looked at it as cleaning up because the feds looking at all of that. And we're trying to clean it up. And all these niggas is useless. That's how Reds looked at it. <laughs> Let's be honest. Uh, 
but but James put it better. He put it in better terms. Um, and so now we're talking 2001, 2002. Came home, now he's different, like James said. Yeah. Now he believe in hype. Interviews he given from prison and everything, he believe in he's the reason that death row was, where was that? <laughs> he believed in that. I mean, that nigga here was, it was hard. I put up a goddamn sign with him, with a picture of him in his jail outfit, talking about on Beverly Hills. Y'all just don't know what the how white pissed off that white folks were. That was a big old billboard on top of our room with him talking about welcome home, sure. <laughs> we John, I got John putting shit on the internet uh, uh, with Snoop Dogg barking, talking about or something like that. What, what, what was that? John will play it for y'all. You know, we play stuff like we put stuff like that out. You know, laughing at Snoop Dogg talking about where you gonna go, where you gonna run, no more. Where you gonna run? Where you gonna hide that Can Snoop Dogg coming on? So when Suge got out of prison, did that solidify his gangster because he went to prison and he felt like he was finally one of us? I think during that time, believing that hype in there because he had he had those soft Sacramento dudes and all that, they were loving him. I signed a couple of dudes from, you know, my boy uh, GP and all of them from Sacramento that mm -hmm. were blood affiliated and all that. So he was up under the blood card in there. Oh, I didn't say that. I'm yeah. saying, like I said earlier, I thought going to prison, I got to get to prison so I can get buff. Because that's where everybody in jail was coming home. Yeah. Yo. They took the waste away during that time. No, no. Just, just okay. I'm, I'm talking yeah. about from my time, gotcha. 86. From from when I went to prison and came home, or before I went, thinking, man, I'm looking at all the big homies, these niggas on whoop whoop, Alton first time in yeah. prison and coming home, he on swole. So okay, I gotta go to prison. Think, yeah. My little brother bigger than me, I gotta go to prison. <laughs> so when Suge went and 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 got noticed of being a blood, and and and, and you gotta remember, Tupac's biggest big now, and everybody associating Suge with Tupac. And so that's what helped Okay, but still, going to prison, ain't nobody looking at you getting your fame from a rapper. They did. He, they but were groupie, he, man. But still, they you, you got policy in prison. That's true. I, and so, I went back there, so I don't know, but go ahead. Okay, so so do, what I'm saying to you is, do you think Suge felt that that now I'm bona fide? I done been to prison. I, 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 I wear the same suit as all the homies now. I can tell prison stories. I've been to prison. Could be. I can only tell how he acted in the visitor room. But that's what I'm saying. And in the visitor sure. room, the niggas that was in New York, and, and he wasn't on no, like me, at no camp or nothing. He was on a level where, I mean... Uh, he was level two. No, no, no. At, at the no. beginning, at the no. beginning. Not until his last bid, he was, he was no. level three. No, he was level, he was there, uh, the Menendez brothers was on the same yard as him. He was on there with, uh, at CMC, he was on level four yard. His first time going? Yeah, I'm going I was in CMC. He was in East or West. He was on I the was West, West going to the right. And went to the hole on, yeah. on the yeah, East. He was on the West. He okay, was. that's not no level four. Yes, it was. Back then. That's St. Louis Obispo. St. Louis Obispo, California Man's Colony. I was in I was in CMC. You probably the camp version or that that other yard. Okay. I'm telling you. The, 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 you know, I just the, hate when you black men downplay another nigga going to jail and then for another nigga to be. Not for real. Anyway. I'm going to tell you what it was then. Okay. I'm no telling you. Richard Ramirez. No, I just asked you. Not question. Richard Ramirez. Not Richard Ramirez. The Menendez brothers. They kept them type of dudes on the East Yard. But they were on that the same prison. It was a level four at Mill Creek at the time. It, it was a, you're right. It was a camp outside, outside the gate. There was a level two with well, dormitories. Yeah, two man seals. Not in CMC. I ain't talking about CMC. CMC was an old prison. I was at That's CMC. That's an old prison. California now. Men's College. Um, but the one that he was at mm -hmm. was uh, Mill Creek. Mill Creek. At that time, that was a. Uh, okay. So anyway, y'all. Uh, that's your night, and that's 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 that story, and uh, that's the, where the change came in, in my opinion. Um, before we, we stop taping, is there anything that you guys want to speak on or um, talk about that I didn't bring up as far as questions or subjects? Yeah. You know, it's a question that's never asked from nobody, and I never heard nobody ask this question. My question is to Reggie and whomever else out there that, that, that hear it. What do we get out of exposing 
you know, your your people and a man that that you know maybe a million people, a lot of people look up to. Uh, you know, it seemed like the bigger you are, the 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 quicker people attack. Are you talking about the episode that we put up about Paul? No, no, oh, okay. no. Oh. That, that our biggest problem toward each other is tearing each other down. It's already obvious that we cannot work together because somebody somebody has an agenda. Out of if you got five, two got an agenda. Two wants to be bigger than the other three. So my what I'm saying is, why do we tear each other down? What is the reason for tearing each other down? For views? What what would be the reason why do that? Um, I don't know what situation you're talking about. Just like I said, in general, you see it every day on on, on YouTube, just this, this social media shit. Anytime I responded to anybody, I was responding. Defending that's what? not that's not my you see people talk about Shaq. You see people just... Why do you think I stopped talking about uh, Dr. Dre? Fuck that car that I got from them. He's a fucking billionaire. What do I look like talking about this nigga? Well, some people say you, you talk bad about Tupac and Tupac Mouse. Or maybe I never, that's, or maybe I never, that's whack. That's whack 100 to talk about. I never... Mouse. Okay. I will retract that. But okay. some people in the comments every day... Every day People say, oh, I'm glad to see Jay changing this too about talking about Tupac. I'm glad Jay's changing. I'm just saying. I know. So your reason, your reason would be, I was responding to the question that the interviewer asked. Right. One or two, telling you my truth or what I heard. No one ever heard me say, fuck that bitch ass nigga or that motherfucker was getting or that motherfucker guy or that motherfucker this. That's hater shit. Yeah. That's hater shit. Never said anything. So you never read a comment where people saying you were talking about I don't about read Tupac? comments, period, period. You never heard of a question that, or somebody said, why you feel that way towards Tupac? Yeah. Okay. Or should. Well, people felt that, that, and this is their conclusion. They felt that I was hating because I wouldn't put in a song. Yeah. They felt that I was hating, or hating because I was over here and everybody was over here doing that, which I had to explain. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Mob James was Mob James. Mob James was never a groupie. I was Mob James. My, I, I felt if I'm on this side over here, especially when Let Me Ride came, Mob James just get his check. Mob James ain't got to do the dirty shit no more. Mob James ain't got to go. I don't have to take no chances to send me back to prison. Yeah. Yeah. Technically, basically, I'm the smart motherfucker. Yeah. My issues with Suge. I can straight what you call them right now. And I didn't think I had to air it and all that. But I showed him that I was mad, that I was pissed off, until it's like, man, take your foot off this nigga neck. It's over. It's done. Yeah. And so I had to get over all of all of my what you call them. And the only problem I had with you is burying buttery. The promise that you, the shit that you lied to my moms about. Yeah. That was my only issue. And I should have let that go when my mama and them still loved me. My family said, nigga, fuck you, nigga, we fucking with you. Okay. On some pick and choose shit. Yeah. So that was my anger. Okay. Anything else other than that? I know what Shug did, what Death Row did for me. I never conversated about that. I'm talking about me and his issue. Okay. Tupac, I don't hate that brother. Don't fuck with him like that you hate. My and my response to that, and the only reason I brought yeah. those two examples up, was that's how I feel on certain things. The only person that I can honestly state that I attacked it first on this YouTube stuff, and and I was just telling a story. It wasn't yeah. like I lied. I told the truth. What's your kill on them? Any other person that I ever respond to was either lying on Reggie or Shug, and I was calling myself setting the record straight. So are you are you quick to jump on? A motherfucker and expose a motherfucker because he lying on you, or are you just like because he spoke on me negatively, okay, or, or or told something that was not factual. I don't say nothing. I tell y'all all the time. Snoop Dogg is my favorite artist, but I don't like how he's trying to rewrite history. Daz Dillinger, I say 
this, 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 and this. But I like Daz. I regret that I put the story out about his wife. Corrupt. I, corrupt is another one I can say that has never spoke bad on me or anything like that, that I put something on him. I did that one. I had to take some responsibility for that, but I told that story. Other than that, there's nobody else on YouTube that y'all can tell me that I have started a war. I'm with. not going to try to tell you that because my conversation, always my been, question wasn't directed to Reggie. I was you hyping said people people for people. views and this. And no, that. I was just saying in general because right. a lot of people that you see these entertainers, they people. go, no, but that, you know, you put yourself in the equation. Listen to what I'm saying. Okay. You put yourself in the equation. Okay. And I was just asking a question. What do they get out of that? What's to get out of You get out of setting the record straight. Because now everybody lives on social media, uh, YouTube and all that. Where in your day, in your heyday, when you were young and out there doing stuff, we didn't have straight at the moment. We didn't have, we didn't have no got dog on social media. We didn't have no Instagram. Man, could you imagine? I'd probably be like Magda Johnson right now if I had Instagrams when, when, <laughs> when I was in my heyday, prior to meeting right. my wife and getting married. Man, I my gosh. God. And um, that's the way that, that's the what they live in. And so that's why I think, that's why Reggie Wright is fine and do the way he And does. I got a question I've been wanting to ask a long time. Okay. Judge, since you know me, man, have I ever been a bad person? Towards you that you think? No, no, not at all. He used to say you ghosting doing uh you ghosting doing um, but that's probably now because you explained earlier in the episodes why you was mad at me that you her. Go ahead. What did he say? What? I just think he didn't he didn't know my number. So when I was calling, all right, well, that ain't what you used to do. So Jay stop. Jay promised he was going to help us. And I kept that I kept that show one hundred, but now I didn't know. But that's what it was. We found out. We found that out. You know, I just don't answer. And the John Fence, we found that out later. But that's the only thing that he ever thought. But even then, I didn't think he was a bad person. No, I wouldn't say, oh, he's an asshole or this or that. I would just say, no. And I I can't be an asshole at times. Oh, I can tell you, I don't know that, man. I'm so 100 with with, with self. You know, and can't nobody tell it better than me. I could be a fucking idiot. You go 100, I can go 136. Quick. I can go from zero to 100 in a second. You know, it's kind of taking me hard to get kickstart this shit because I don't drink no more. <laughs> but, boy, I drink a glass of water. You niggas make me mad. <laughs> so, you know, it's just, it's just, you know, I'm glad life is different. And yeah. the honest, honestly, I can honestly say I done met a lot of good people doing this. Yeah, I agree. And, you know. And in the conversations as well. Yeah, I met a lot of good people doing this. And, you know, can't nobody change that. You know what I'm saying? You know, do I got to uh, revamp the way I think about dealing with people? In a way. But what I've learned is conducting business is conducting business. And I got to stay on top of that. You know, I learned my lesson. Mm-hmm. You know, if Reggie said, you dumb motherfucker, I have to accept that because I was a dumb motherfucker. If 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 Nino said, I told that I told stupid so. son of a bitch, I can't be mad. However y'all phrase it, I can't be mad because I wouldn't look at it, oh no, that ain't gonna happen to me or whatever. But what I'm saying is, you know, I'm I'm I thank God. When you get up to so 100 with him, I would never thought he would have did you that way. It's okay. But you know, I met a lot of good people. I I met a lot of good kids. Cool. I met a lot of good parents. Correct. You know, so it was all worth it. Yeah. You know, yeah. it was all worth it. Not that I mean, you know, uh Greg Caden and Donna yeah. and and got and trip to Australia. Man, going to Australia. Uh, boy, big Nick. Man, the average big, old nah. gang street nigga ain't going out uh Australia. Yeah. But uh Nick Nick. Yeah, good dude. You know, I met a lot of good people and all the guys I met in Australia. Yeah. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So, you know. Cool trip. Yeah. You know, I wouldn't change it for nothing. I don't want nobody to ever think that Gangster Chronicles is it, you. It, it, is it, you. It, you know what I'm saying? No, no. And, and we learn from it. Move on. I learned from being in the hood, gang banging. I learned from 
on the motorcycle set, this shit don't make me because yeah. I wear a patch. Yeah. This shit don't make me because of Gangster Chronicles. None of that shit makes me. And I can't stop because I'm not giving my glory to nobody. Yeah. I don't care who it is. So uh, at that, I'm, I'm cool. And I appreciate everybody, appreciate everybody that supported me. You know, I heard one cat uh, say, how can you be a part of something you don't know nothing of? Wait a minute, how the fuck is that? You don't know me or our norm. You don't know our business. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, but people got a right. Once it's exploited and put out there, people got a right to respond however they choose to. That's true. I don't get mad. I don't read some of the shit. But some of the shit, I am shocked that grown people think the way they do. Yeah. But I used to think like some of these assholes that be coming. Yeah. I swear to God. So the majority of them is trying to be funny. And, and, and they can be. Man, I take I take every lick for for where I'm at and what, what happened with me and this dude. Yeah. I take my part in it because I was just too kicked back on it and I allowed business to be what it was. You feel me? Instead of being on my toes, instead of thinking that I have to watch this devil. I'm not looking at this man like a devil. You know, we talk about church. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I didn't think, man, never get caught with your drawers down. <laughs> I mean, with your guards. <laughs> with your guards. Yeah, I'll spot a little bit you. <laughs> no, that ain't got nothing to do with that. And I didn't say that to take a shot at Reggie's star shit. But uh, no, what I'm saying is, you know, I got caught. Yeah. And I got caught slipping big time. Yeah. And like I said, it'll never happen again. It'll never happen again. So I'm learning from my experience and my lessons because all this, hey man, I ain't nothing but a motherfucking gangbanger. Didn't do this, didn't do that. You know, I'm selling myself short because this is my life. And I'm just keeping it honest with what type of nigga I am. I ain't trying to be a Beverly Hills nigga. I ain't trying to go to nightclubs or or different spots so because people know who Gangster Chronicles James McDonald is. Yeah. Fuck that. I don't need that. I dealt with that with Shield Nim. Yeah. Watched him with all his exposure and all that shit. That shit don't do nothing but turn you into a different motherfucker. A person. Yeah. So I'm good, man. I appreciate it. I appreciate everybody out there that just at least understand having this shit that I said, and I, I wish Norm come rebut and tell me where I'm wrong at anything I said. You can call me or you can get on, on, on your show and say whatever it is. Well, hopefully by now, just a few episodes in, he has reached out to you and we got it all worked out. And uh, well, Bound First Family, uh, we appreciate y'all, y'all support, and all y'all in the comment sessions. And the relationships we done developed from there, mm -hmm. because y'all know a lot of y'all we have. I just want to say once again, I appreciate y'all. Right. Don't take y'all for advantage that y'all won't be there. I right. look at us as a as a community. And, uh, That's to all the gangsters out there. Not for a plan. <laughs> <laughs> With his red B hat on. <laughs> I was playing. I know. Damn. I was playing. I ain't did that in a long time, man. I can't even throw it up no more. Peace out. Peace.